Today, we are starting off a new tier list. This is just a normal tier list of how good the characters are in the game. I know I've done several other tier lists, but this is going back to the roots of just ranking the characters and how good they are in the game. So I'm kind of combining two things that I've done in the past with just the names of low tier, bottom tier, mid tier, but also ranking these characters out of 10, and it's going to be a range. So let's say in this mid tier, it's going to be anywhere from a 6 out of 10 to a 6.9999 out of 10. It's not just only characters that are 6, because technically there are orders within tiers, although loose. But let's just get into it. Starting off with the bottom tier character, you're going to know who it is, of course, it's Ganondorf. I do think Ganondorf is by a large margin the worst character in the game, but he's still a 4 out of 10 character. Very strong, he has good edge guarding. if you can get your hits with Ganondorf, it is amazing. However, his flaws are very notable. One of the worst disadvantages in the game, if not the worst disadvantage, he has one of the worst recoveries in the game, if not the worst recovery, he has bad air speed, bad ground speed, his out of shield options are lackluster, basically he cannot handle pressure and just hopes to outplay you in neutral over and over again which is really difficult because the overall strength of characters in this game is actually ridiculous. So while Ganondorf does have the tools to win, sometimes he has more tools to lose or other characters have more tools to win, so he is always fighting an uphill battle. Yes, I know Higa-chan from Japan does some crazy stuff in the online tournaments and even the offline events, but the character is still the worst in the game. And he stands alone in the bottom tier with 4 out of 10. And honestly, I think he's the worst, as I said, by a significant margin. So this low tier is actually empty. This is just a gap tier. No one sits in this tier because the next worst character is at worst, in my opinion, a 6 out of 10. And of course, that character is still going to be Little Mac. Little Mac, even though he has a lot better tech and a lot better result than he has the last time I did this tier list with Peanut doing amazingly crazy, crazy good player. But of course, ranking the character, he still has a ton of flaws, right? He can randomly just die at zero. He doesn't have aerials, so if opponents kind of camp him in the air, it can be really difficult for him to get kills unless he's hitting their landing, which is pretty difficult to do and also risky to do because if he's wrong with like an up B or a side B, he might get thrown off stage and die. However, his strengths are much more than someone like Ganondorf's. Of course, he has super armor and trample on his tilts. He is incredibly fast on the ground, and honestly, his airspeed is pretty good too. It just doesn't really matter as much because his aerials all suck. Little Mac is honestly really good on the current stage list, having Small Battlefield, Hollow Bastion be generally legal at tournaments, along with his other already good stages, uh, such as PS2 and Battlefield. This character can kill you really early, has a surprising amount of control, and makes you guess unless you are the really, really upper echelon characters with absurd neutrals or absurd punish games. He's really scary, of course, his Atta Shield is really good with up B, up smash, uh, his anti-airs are really good, his parry game is crazy, his shield game in general is crazy, but again, he just gets Gets hit and dies sometimes and that is going to be enough to put him down here but again I think with the optimizations that Peanut has been showing this character isn't a low tier anymore but a mid tier I would, I would give him a 6 out of 10 rating. Speaking of characters that sometimes die when they're off stage and a demotion from my last tier list we have Dr. Mario. For those of you that missed the stream of my last tier list, you wouldn't understand that Dr. Mario was only high in my last tier list because someone was like, hey, how much money to put him in high tier? And I was like, oh, like 100 or 200 dollars. And then they gave that to me. So he was put into the high tier. But still a solid 6 out of 10 character. We have seen the Dr. Marios be doing really well recently, specifically with Jazar. I know he did pretty well at Smash Factor, so it's not just an online thing. I know Bacon continues to show results sometimes. He has a strong advantage game, really good killing, really good out of shield. So if you aren't ready to play a more defensive game plan against this character and know how to get out of his combos and strings and his pressure situations, he's a terrifying character. Pill can be really scary. If you ever land a forward air, or a cape, or a back air, up smash out of shield, up B out of shield, he has so many things. But again, the problem is his stats aren't that great. His recovery is one of the worst in the game still. He doesn't have great airspeed, so he kind of gets juggled for a while and it's not particularly hard to keep him in the air. And also, he's slow, so people that are fast on the ground and have bigger hitboxes, he will have a hard time getting in. Like, he loses to most sword characters, he loses to most fast characters, he loses to characters that have strong combo games, especially if they have range with it. So the character struggles against a decent amount of the cast, but that doesn't mean that he can't win, because Ultimate is a game where every character can win. So Dr. Mario, even though he's a bottom three character, still a huge, huge threat if you do not know the matchup. So. I think he's pretty good. We have a polarizing character coming up in terms of her gameplay and her strategies and how much people like fighting her. We're going to go with the Princess of Hyrule, Zelda. 
She has crazy kill potential, decent strategies. Uh, she has a lot of good stuff about her, but her stats are kind of mediocre. She's one of the easiest characters to juggle in the game. She's one of the slowest characters in the game, but she has a really, really good projectile in terms of Phantom. And if you can't deal with Phantom, this character is obnoxious. She also has a reflector, so she actually matches pretty well into zoners, which are pretty common in this game. So as long as they're not also running away from her with their speed, like someone like a young Link, this character can actually do pretty well in some relevant matchups. And again, if you're not ready for something about this character, she's going to kill you at 60 or 70 with lightning kicks, with up airs, with uppies out of shield. She has a lot of good stuff, but that doesn't mean she's not still in the lower echelon of characters. She struggles to get off of the ledge if you can't set up a phantom. She struggles to get down at all. I mean, she gets back to the ground quicker sometimes, but it's still going to be an area that you can punish her. But again, gets juggled, gets ledge trapped pretty bad, ledge traps people pretty efficiently, does a lot of damage when she gets her hands on you, can zone you out, but it's difficult for her to keep up the zoning against the better characters in this game, and it's difficult for her to get her hands on you if it's a character that doesn't really get affected by the zoning, but also can kind of play that mid-range pokey game. So again, Zelda, pretty solid character, but not going to be anywhere better than bottom four, though. And I think this is actually a, a like slight underrating of the character, but I just think he is very okay, even though he does fight for his friends, and that is Ike. Again, this is the type of character we're talking about down here. This is much how much faith I have in these three characters to kind of group Ike here. Obviously, Ike has a lot of good stuff. He has one of the best arrows in the game in terms of neutral air. He has really solid kill confirms. He's, again, really good at killing. But I feel like Ike is a little too simple, and his frame data isn't quite good enough to do a lot of the mix-ups that he was at the beginning of the game. And again, there are so many characters that their metas have advanced, and the characters that he was doing well against, he no longer does well against. And this is more so like a player versus player thing. But again, I really don't like having to rely on player versus player as a character, because that means that you have to outplay your opponent, but you could also be outplaying your opponent while also letting your character outplay your opponent's character. You know what I'm saying? So Ike, even though he does have a lot of stuff, forward tilt, dash attack, back air, up air, neutral air, you know, eruption two frames, a decent recovery, you know, sometimes the recovery is exploitable if you get a hit out of your double jump. And again, his neutral is very one-dimensional, right? Like I would say Little Mac has a more diverse neutral than someone like Ike, even though Ike also has aerials and ground moves, but still, he is kind of only fishing for one thing the majority of the game, it's like nair and grab, sometimes down tilt. Obviously the popularity has gone down, I feel like the results have overall gone down, and that isn't to say that again, Ike can't win, I think Ike still boasts pretty decent matchups with a lot of the high tiers and top tiers of this game. It's not like he gets bodied by every single character in the cast, right? I mean, he has a good matchup versus Game & Watch, which I rank really, really highly. Uh, but at the same time, having a couple of good matchups doesn't mean your character is good, because every character in this game has a couple of good matchups. It's kind of how Ultimate works. And I can already hear you in the comments being like, Esam, this is ridiculous. I understand. I don't necessarily disagree. But I have just seen so much more of these other mid-tier characters that I feel like I have to put Ike down, because he's doing less recently than the characters that are universally seen as bad, which maybe means that he's also kind of bad. The protagonist of World is Light slides in at the sixth worst character in the game. I think Kirby's kinda good. We obviously saw Gilhu versus Spargo. If you missed my analysis of that, it'll be up in the corner. The thing about this character that is better, in my opinion, than all these other characters is that Kirby has really solid win conditions. I mean, obviously, Little Mac has KO Punch, and like camping with Zelda can be really good, but Kirby has like very obvious win conditions, right? Of hit your opponent off stage with your combos that drag horizontally, edge guard them. And in a game where a lot of the good characters are kind of amazing, but kind of struggle to recover, like Aegis, like Cloud, this character can really shine in those aspects. In a game that is jump the game, right? Kirby has an amazing crouch and can nullify characters that specifically need to jump all the time, such as Zero Suit or Palutena can do well versus Wolf. I mean, I've seen the Kirbys do really well in the matchup. Again, Jaja Jaja beat out and Ouch is like ranked like 30th or something in the Lumi rank. Kirby's tilts are all amazing. You know, you got hit off stage, you died. You got your double jump read by a back air or a forward air, you died. Of course, they can inhale to kind of swing matchups on their head, even of rough matchups like Shulk or Snake suddenly get a lot harder when Kirby gets that inhale. However, that doesn't mean that Kirby is an amazing character because again, Kirby's stats are kind of mid. You can kind of camp Kirby out if you are playing really, really defensively, but it's one of those things that it's really hard to consistently do that because over the course 
course of a seven minute game, Kirby can absolutely catch up to you, get one hit, do a ton of damage, and then just end up killing you. Then Kirby can camp because he has the lead, can crouch, has really good ground moves if you're trying to approach, you'll get up tilted. This character also does so much damage for some reason. Dare Ride is a crazy combo and the Kirby's are getting better at it. His normal combos just do like 40 to 50, and I know that's like a general B&B for this game, but for a character that's like kind of bad, like the sixth worst character in the game, that's kind of ridiculous. This next character might come as a shock considering I've lost to this character in a somewhat recent set, but next up we're going to be talking about Isabel. Isabel is honestly one of those characters that you need to know the matchup in order to play well versus a character because she's obnoxious otherwise. If you do not know or have an efficient way to deal with the down B on the ground, this character can be annoying. If you do not know how to punish her side B when it's withdrawing because you might run in too quickly and still get command grab, this character can be annoying. Of course, forward air and back air are going to be amazing, Nair out of shield is great. This character has really solid low percent combos with up tilts, up airs, forward airs, grabs. This character has a decent amount of stuff. Isabel's a pretty good character. However, the disadvantage of this character leaves something to be desired. You can be reverse pocket, uh, but otherwise like getting off of the ledge and getting down against a lot of characters can be a real struggle for this character, and killing can also be a struggle. The lack of getting something like a triple turn up like Villager would to get a kill, the lack of really strong out of shield options. I mean, Up Smash is pretty strong, but it's not going to be strong compared to a lot of other characters, and it's also not that big. It can sometimes be difficult to land a kill if you're not getting either a command grab or like a down B into up air type confirm or like a hard read forward smash, right? She does have, of course, her jab wobble type thing with jab, jab, down smash, jab, up tilt into up air, I'm pretty sure works, although I don't know if that will ever actually kill. I don't think Isabel has similar flaws to the characters below her because like she's not really a character that can get zoned out or walled out or just like ran away from, but she is a character that can get overwhelmed in the offense because she doesn't have great defensive options. And so that can lead to just the strong characters that do a lot of damage just kind of aggressing and just killing Isabel pretty early. Up next is a character that has had a resurgence in the meta because of their great matchup with one particular character being Peach, we have King DDD. And yes, I say DDD now, I do think this character is still quite mid, right? The character has a lot of flaws, is quite slow, has awful airspeed, but one thing that is really, really important in today's meta is longevity. DDD is one of the heaviest characters in the game, so even if you're going to 0 to 80 this character, or have a really strong advantage versus this character, which a lot of top tiers can do, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to kill him. He has a recovery that is mess withable, but it has armor on the up B, so it's pretty difficult to get a kill on this. This character eventually gets an opportunity to play neutral again, and even though the neutral isn't great, right, it's not an amazing neutral, it is still a chance to get a hit, get your opponent on the ledge, and that is of course where DDD shines with his ledge trapping between Gordo, forward tilt, down smash, up smash, this character can get a ton of mileage, and of course is pretty strong, right, he has good kill moves in terms of back air, Gordo, up tilt, of course all of the smash attacks, right, having a command grab kind of makes it a little bit more difficult, or I guess ambiguous, of how to juggle this character, so because you can't just shield the landing aerial and then punish him like you can like other with other characters that are the heavy characters like Bowser or DK. The weight of this character is huge right now. I think longevity is so, so important in a game, whether it's you can avoid getting hit by kill moves or you can just survive the kill moves because you're a really heavy character. So that is kind of what bumped DDD up a bit in my tier list compared to last time. Still not a great character, right? He still has all of his flaws that I've mentioned multiple times, but DDD is just a character that's kind of exactly exhausting and mentally taxing to play against him, especially if it's keeping, like if the DDD player is keeping it close, right? Because you always have to be careful of that random dash attack two frame, of that, you know, oh, you're at ledge, are you going to get hit by this Gordo? Are you going to get two framed, you know, by down tilt? Are you going to, you know, you have to be ready for so long because this character can just live a very long time and it puts people on edge and that can really, really help over the course of not only just a game, but especially a set. And at this point in the tier list, we're starting to reach the, they have really good results nowadays, top eight at regionals or majors, because we're talking about the Belmonts, obviously the top eight would be Wave Dash. This character is very, very difficult to approach on. The wall that the Belmont players are throwing up with forward airs and side Bs, all the traps that they have are really, really difficult to deal with unless you play either a very, very strong character in like the matchup specifically, or you have a ton of experience against them. It is very 
difficult to approach a Belmont efficiently without getting slapped around a couple of times. Honestly, I feel like the characters that do the best versus the Belmonts aren't necessarily the ones that mitigate to the wall, but just don't care, eventually get in, and then kill them. They have a great fastball air dodge, and of course, if you're far enough away from them, they can kind of just throw side B or just like fall with a forward air to kind of cover their landing. The character is quite good, right? Like we're not necessarily at the 6.0 characters anymore. This is more like a 6.4, 6.3 type of thing. Kind of the opposite of Deity, right? Where Deity, you can make mistakes and then eventually find a hit. The Belmonts kind of suffer from the opposite of they have to play perfect and not get hit because if they do, they might die. You know, the Belmonts are more similar to Ganon and Little Mac in that aspect where, oh, you get hit, you might die. They're really easy to combo. They're like a great combo weight, a great combo size. Uh, they get edge guarded quite heavily and they're just really, really good combo weight for most characters in the game. And they have to avoid getting hit at all costs, which they can do. They have great tools to not get hit, but that doesn't mean it's going to be something you can do efficiently over the course of a five minute game or especially a three out of five set. But this character has started pulling much better results and much more optimized stuff. We're talking Piranha Plant. Of course, Lucky just won Warp Zone of Regional in the Midwest recently over some very strong players and suddenly Piranha Plant has been doing better again. Lucky has scored some amazing wins but not only is it character wins, just doing well, having good placement results at these tournaments kind of shows me that Piranha Plant is a little bit better than I thought. Of course, I have been playing against Diz's Piranha Plant in Central Florida a couple of times. Not only are they a matchup check because if you're not ready to just deal with Patui, it's going to be a rough time, but this character has decent combos, a recovery that's easy to mess with as an elite edge guarder, but if you don't have great edge guarding, this character's gonna make it back. You have armor, you have great ledge trapping, you have strong advantage. Uh, this character also has really good killing, right? Piranha Plant kills you with back air, with up smash, has one of the best kill throws in the game. Of course, Patui's a kill move. If you ever get hit by the armor of Down B, this is gonna be scary. The edge guarding of this character can be really solid. So this character has a lot. However, they are just basically outclassed by a lot of characters. They don't really have great range. So if a character is like a sword character, they can kind of do really well versus him. If a character can kind of camp better than him, it can be a difficulty. If they have a reflector for Patui and Poison Cloud, it can be difficult to kind of mitigate pressure. I'm excited to see where this character goes in the future because I do think the combos are getting better, the advantage is getting better, and if you can pick up on someone's habits like their fastball air dodging, you're gonna get up smashed at like 85 and explode. Robin is our next character on this list, and honestly, this is a pretty low placement for Robin, but again, I think all of these characters are tournament threats, right? So even though this is technically like bottom six, seven, bottom 11, right? This character is still quite scary. Robin, of course, when they have all of the materials, 11 sword and fire and thunder, this character has a lot of things that you have to learn to deal with. This character is really strong, has amazing kill potential, great edge guarding, um, obnoxiously good ledge trapping, like all these characters, those the last like four have really, really good ledge trapping. Just generally good normals, great aerials, can air to air. There are some aspects of this character that are unfortunately lacking. The offstage gameplay, because you can run out of wind tomes, is a little bit rough. They can go high, but they're going to get hit. And of course, the biggest deal for this character, the biggest issue, is running out of your resources because this character can go from a terrifying character that you're incredibly afraid of into a character that you're just gonna run at and not really care what they have if they run out of fire, if they run out of Levin Sword. Like, I can literally be scared of getting hit by anything because I'm at 95% and they have Levin Sword, and then they whiff three times with Levin Sword, and then suddenly I'm no longer scared of this character and you just run at them and not really care because the projectiles are reactable and even if you're wrong and you jump in into something like a non-leven forward air or nair, it's not gonna matter. Resource management sometimes makes characters worse, but having like, you know, broken resources is what makes characters like Steve crazy. However, Robin's resources make them a pretty good character, right? If they constantly had all their resources and never had to worry about it, I would probably put Robin somewhere in like high tier, like maybe even like upper high tier, like upper high tier, maybe like around, uh, you know, Byleth or something like that. But because these things run out and they aren't the best character in the game without them, it means that they're going to sit down here, especially with a recovery as exploitable as theirs is. For the next little chunk of characters, we actually have four characters that are kind of having a resurgence in their meta and just a very, like, a swing, an upswing in their popularity. First off, we're talking about Bowser Jr. 
Bowser Jr. has had an upswing in results recently. They have added a player into their ranks that's been doing really well in Zap. You have Yoda Cage, who just beat Void and did pretty decent at SmashCon. You have Sweshy, who did well at Collision. Of course, I'm pretty sure like Young Eevee still plays Bowser Jr. out in Europe. You have Riridze, who uh, now lives in Central Florida, who's really, really strong. This character has a lot of rep, but I mean, this character has a lot of good things about them, right? They are, have a difficult to deal with side B. They have the best footstool out of shield in the game with footstool side B and footstool up B. They have great edge guarding. They have very strong combos. They have a great grab, kill throw, kill jab. The kill potential of this character is ridiculous. Uh, the only thing keeping this character from being higher is the fact that sometimes they're going to explode because of the higher damage and knockback, uh, you know, because they're correlated when you hit Bowser Jr. with a kill move as opposed to the cart. Sometimes you get comboed for longer because you hit the cart, so even though they're supposed to be flying farther away or get knocked farther away, they don't because they actually take less knockback. This character randomly will take more damage and more knockback in situations that are really inconvenient for them. And of course, they have the thing with their up B that if they uh, get hit out of their up B with a move that doesn't send into tumble, they don't get their up B back, so they die, which means that random characters can just kill them at zero uh, when they're off stage, which means that the character has to play really, really solid all the time with the risk of that happening to them. But the character has some good stuff, obviously it has amazing strength, but again, randomly dying at zero when you don't have the ridiculous strengths of someone like a top tier character can be really rough. While this next character isn't necessarily getting more popular, their best rep has been doing really well and boasting some strong wins on some elite level players. We're talking Lucario and Armadillo. I think in my last year list I put Lucario at bottom four, but since then Armadillo has told me to sit down and shut up because he's been beating people that are elite level players. He got a win on Shoe Tone. He's been doing generally very well. I don't remember the other players he's beat, although I know he's beat more than just Shoe Tone. Got ninth at Battle of BC, has been playing honestly very consistently recently, had him having their lowest placement at SmashCon at like 49th in the past while, and when your worst placement is 49th, that's pretty damn good. This character is kind of the opposite of what I was talking about with DDD where, oh, he's going to live longer and eventually get an opportunity and then can kind of edge trap. Lucario isn't necessarily going to live longer, but he's going to cut the lives of every other character very short. It doesn't matter how much he's losing by, Lucario can always make a comeback, not even because, oh, he'll just outplay his opponent, but because he hits them twice and they die. And characters that hit twice and kill their opponent are really good. Or a sphere at ledge back air, up smash, side B. He has so many great tools. The only reason he is still, in my opinion, a mid-tier character and not higher than this, you know, maybe he should be in the seven out of 10 category, is just because he's inconsistent. And again, there are so many characters in this game that have ridiculous kill potential that you're not even going to get a chance to have max aura. Well, Lucario with no aura is like the second or third worst character in the game. Still better than Ganondorf probably because he has a decent recovery, but he does like no damage, has to do so much work to get, you know, any amount of damage, any killing. So you need to rely on that aura um, to get kills, get better damage. And if you're not really going to have that aura that often, you know, even if you'll get the stock aura, right? Like you're down a stock, therefore you're stronger. If you're not getting that, like I'm at 90% aura, it's going to be really hard for this character. And sometimes that just happens. I honestly haven't seen a Lucario matchup chart recently, but I can imagine this character having some pretty solid matchups, whether winning or even with plenty of the top tiers. But the nature of this character is inconsistent, and therefore I cannot put him higher than this. Regardless of what day it is right now, we're talking about Monkey Monday up next. Donkey Kong has definitely had a large resurgence in results and player base, mostly off of the backs of Hikaru and Chunky Kong. Hikaru got top three at a European major a couple of months ago, and Chunky Kong top aided Momocon in May with solo DK, beating players like Cosmos, and Hikaru, of course, beating Bloom Forever in one of the craziest sets of all year. This character has the strengths of King DDD that I was talking about, where sometimes he will just live. He's a little bit more edge guardable, and by a little, I mean a lot more edge guardable than someone like King DDD, but at the same time, his stats are significantly better overall. He is fast on the ground, has great great ground normals, of course is one of the best kill confirms in the game with his DKO or Ding Dong. He's just strong in general, he has quite good normals between down tilt and back air and up tilt and up air, has a really solid advantage state, but again the reason he can't be higher than this is simply because he can get hit and die, whether he's going to take a bunch of percent and then get hit off stage and get edge guarded or get edge trapped for a really long time. This character can struggle to get back into neutral, but he is terrifying in neutral. I had to play Chunky Kong at CEO, I was so 
scared the entire time, and my matchup with that character is plus three. DK is definitely one of those characters that puts the fear in you because if they just play advantage right, they might kill you. If they get that down tilt trip at 45%, they might kill you, whether it's with punch or grabs. Uh, you know, Chunky Kong almost took Sonics to game five. Sonics, of course, one of the best players in the world in a matchup that can't be good. I don't know, man. This character's kind of nice. Again, still somewhere in mid tier because the high tiers in this game are also pretty nice. But DK is definitely one of the scarier characters now and is getting a lot more prevalent in the meta. So, gotta be ready. The last character in this chunk of characters that have had a bit of a resurgence when it comes to their results, you know, is mostly off of the back of two players. We're talking about Banjo and Kazooie. The main person I'm talking about is, of course, TG from Japan, getting wins on Mutace and other top players, but Mutace is the main one I know. And of course, I happen to live in a region with one of the Banjos that has been playing amazingly recently in terms of Blompy, that have definitely taken sets off of literally every top player in Central Florida except for me, including beating Jake. I'm pretty sure with Banjo and Kazooie, beating Goblin with Banjo and Kazooie, beating Beast Mode Paul, that might well, that one might be with Palu, but this character is kinda scary. The problem with this character, honestly, is they have a lot of really amazing stuff, but they are really difficult. Like, they have to, like, do things similar to what Pikachu has to do in terms of dexterity, in terms of mobility, in terms of having to be reverse and not be reverse and do all these perfect little things and be always ready for these situations, but of course, unlike Pikachu, like, they're going to net way less, they're going to net 25 or 30%, they're going to net getting down to the ground, being a little bit more difficult to deal with, or getting, you know, like 30% in a combo, maybe sometimes when they're at higher percents, it'll lead into like the Breagle Blaster into the Side B Confirm, but this character is randomly super technical and difficult to play for not that much reward, because obviously the, uh, you know, task of the like shooting the eggs back and forth is never going to realistically happen, so even though they technically, theoretically are the best character in the game because of that, uh, that's never going to happen. But either way, the technical skill that you need to play this character at a very high level is really high, like higher than most characters for significantly less reward than the other characters that require that dexterity, but that doesn't mean that they don't still have amazing things. They have some of the best two-framing in the game with, you know, forward smash and down smash and down tilt and side B. They have a difficult to deal with projectile in terms of their down B. Neutral B is a very good move. They have a great back air, good forward tilt. They have some decent moves, it's just it's a little clunky to work all of it around when you aren't incredibly proficient and messing up with this character can really hurt. I do think they have pretty decent matchups even in the high and top tiers. They have some winning matchups, some, you know, difficult to deal with matchups at the very least, like awkward evens for the top tiers, and that's a good thing to have in this meta because they can randomly do well at a tournament if they have a strong bracket. I mean, that's why you saw TG beat Mudace. I know Wompy thinks that uh, Banjo beats Cloud, who's a really prevalent meta threat. This character can do quite well in all of these aspects, but consistency is really difficult for this character because of just how hard they are. Speaking of consistency issues, we have one of the characters that can be absolutely terrifying, but is generally not because they're really hard and they're going to die at 5%. We got Pichu. Pichu is, in my opinion, still one of the best offensive characters in the game. They have crazy combos, they're so fast, they have so many mix-ups, they have great edge guarding, great, you know, damaging combos, amazing kill confirms, but the problem is, in a meta where people have big swords that they swing safely, and characters that have really strong kill confirms or just really strong random kill moves, like a snake up tilt or a pyra forward tilt, this character can really struggle. You have to be playing so well and so on point to get all of your stuff, which sometimes is SDI dependent and your opponent can get out anyway, but even if they don't and you're dealing 80% in a hit, someone can deal 40% and then you're at the same type of death percent, which is so sad. You never can outlast your opponent when you are running away from them, and you know, one of the biggest things is knowing that you are safe in this game and knowing that you aren't going to die from something, but Pichu rarely has that because things randomly kill him because he is a fast faller so he can get spiked off stage and die really early, and of course he's the lightest character in the game, so he will randomly die to super weird things at like 40 to 60 percent like I don't even know what percent a diamond forward smash will kill Pichu it's probably like 40 uh, maybe like 30 at the ledge 50 from center stage I know me brawler can sometimes grab him at literally 30 percent if I have rage and kill him from the floor that's kind of the struggle of this character is you have to be playing so well so consistently and the thing is if you're going to be playing so well so consistently you can do that with a better character is he still going to make upsets? Yes. Does he still have good matchups in the top tier, especially against characters like Roy and Joker and 
Fox, absolutely. This character does still has really strong winning matchups, but over the course of a tournament, you are going to mess up. Over the course of a tournament, you are going to run into matchups that are less than favorable for you. So unfortunately, Pichu, even though I think he's a good character in theory, is still down here. We went from Hyper Rushdown, and now we're talking to Hyper Control. We got Villager. Villager is honestly a surprisingly uncommon character. I feel like with how much people like Animal Crossing that more people would play Villager and also Isabelle, even though I do see more Isabelles than Villager overall. But Villager, just in general, is much more control, right? You have Lloyd Rocket, you have forward air, back air, you have tree and down B, which kind of you know, halts the game quite a bit. This character, in my opinion, does have some great stuff. Again, good grab combos, great killing with up smash out of shield. You get triple turnips. How unfortunately, you sometimes do get one turnips to kind of balance that out. But you also have like forward smash, down smash berries. This character can honestly be quite scary if you are able to get people off stage or if people don't know how to deal with all of your stuff again. However, the problems that this character has are similar to Isabelle's, right? Where they don't have a great disadvantage, they don't have a great recovery. I mean, they go it goes really far, but you will take a lot of damage when recovering and you don't honestly, in my opinion, have a great way to get off of the ledge if the person just respects ledge hop forward air. So many characters in the top tier kind of thrive in that space, so it can be difficult to solidly get wins on these characters. But again, if this character randomly has explosive off with forward air change into forward smash or like reading an air dodge into like a down air into up smash like this character has a ton of great things i know that uh pokelam or elam beat mbd last weekend again has decent matchups in some of the top tiers right in my opinion does decent versus samus decent versus snake one of diddy's worst matchups you know villager and isabel both but again in the meta with a lot of sword characters and in the meta with a lot of characters that are very consistent in neutral it's hard to out consistency those characters as a character that kind of wants to be consistent but doesn't have the crazy tools that these other characters have so we have a mid tier from a decently light character to one of the super heavies of the game, we're talking about King K. Rule next. I think K. Rule has a lot of great tools. Belly armor, great edge guarding in my opinion, scary ledge trapping, random super bursts of killing, really tricky setups with crown and jabs. This character also has decent results recently. Obviously last year we had Kirby Kid doing great and Brujo doing great, and I think they're still both doing decent even though they haven't been traveling as much. Similar to King Dedede, we have a character that's going to live a long time and is terrifying with rage. You know, getting spiked by this character with rage, getting down throwed, getting down tilted. This character can randomly just explode damage onto you, which can be really rough to deal with considering they're heavy and will have rage more often than not. However, if people do know how to edge guard him by kind of grabbing the ledge, dropping off on the inside of the stage, and then uh, double jump back airing this character, sometimes you are going to get rinse repeat edge guarded in a way that kind of takes away from your longevity stocks, but if your opponent doesn't know how to do that slash they're not in a position to cover that, Hero's recovery does go incredibly far. Uh, he honestly can harass people in many aspects because of this far recovery. Having something like an armor move that is an edge guarding tool that his neutral air is, is really, really underrated because he actually edge guards a lot of characters legitimately for free. I don't know, man, this character's kind of scary. You know, not necessarily for me personally because Pikachu does ridiculously well versus this character, but K. Rule is a threat if you do not know the matchup, and in plenty of matchups in the high tier, this character does pretty decent. Kirby Kid has always done well versus the Steve players, even though that matchup is probably still bad in theory, but can do very well versus some big meta threats by just outplaying their opponent. They have the tools to outplay, even if they are less consistent than some of these other high and top tier characters. I don't know, he has good tools, and if you can't deal with projectiles really well, then the Crown and the Cannonball, sorry, Blunderbuss, can do quite well. His edge trapping can be a little tricky to deal with. Like, you can kind of subvert the expectations of people when playing this character if they know the matchup and do some weird stuff that kind of preys on them knowing too much and being too ready for, like, the most intense sequences and setups, and then just, like, smack them with forward smash, just dash attack them, get an edge guard, something like that. This character can randomly steal stocks, steal games, and steal sets, so you gotta be ready for K. Rule. This next character is one I've made a video on analyzing one of their top players. That top player is Fawn, and we're talking about Duck Hunt. This character has had two videos of mine recently uh, because this character is one of the coolest to watch, right? A ton of setups, great projectiles, good aerials, solid damage. The literally main issue with this character is killing. If you're not getting something like a side B into forward smash, which apparently works, or side B into back air because people are ready for it, this character is not going to be 
killing until 150, 170. Like, I consistently live as a Pikachu player who's a life character at, until 140, 150. And in the game, kind of as I talked about with like the heavy characters being better in like the recent meta, is that if you cannot kill your opponent and then they can get their kill confirm on you, that's gonna be rough. Duck Hunt does not have a hitbox on their up B, which means that this character is very susceptible to edge guarding. Just randomly, if they can't get a kill and try to extend off stage, they can get spiked. They can get edge trapped for a long time. Of course, Can can help. Their Can and Side B are both frame one, which is obnoxious to deal with as most characters. You know, it makes a lot of combos not true, but again, you're taking damage, and if you're at high percent from like a kill con or, you know, trying to avoid a kill confirm, you might just accidentally, you know, kill yourself with the Can which is rough. In my opinion, Duck Hunt has a lot of strong strengths, and honestly doesn't have that many weaknesses other than not killing and being susceptible offstage, but those are two really, really important um, flaws, in my opinion. Like, not being able to kill is arguably one of the most important flaws, like that and dying early because of a bad disadvantage. Like, I don't think Duck Hunt has a bad disadvantage, but because they're susceptible offstage and can't kill, they can get clutched on a lot. Like, they will get clutched on more than they will clutch against other people in my opinion, which is not a good property to have in a game as volatile as Smash Ultimate. I think the Duck Hunts have been doing really well recently, but again, still like a high 6, you know, 6.8, 6.9 type of thing. Nice, uh, but not nice as hell. And hopefully with this higher placement of this character, people will be less mad at me in the YouTube comments. We are talking about, of course, Marth. He's no longer the worst swordsman in the game, because I think that's Ike. I've been seeing some of Krieg's results. I've been seeing Krieg play. This character has some good stuff. Again, similar to Duck Hunt, Marth can sometimes struggle to kill if you're not getting your tippers, right? And again, getting tippers is honestly not super consistent. There are very few true combos into your tipper setups, and it's mostly just going to be you outspacing your opponent or spacing very, very well against them, which again, is volatile inherently because of how fast the game is, because people will just overshoot, or because you just mess up because you're human. But more than most of the characters down here, Marth has a lot of control because sword is big and sword is safe and sword is good. Swords are inherently a good thing to have in this game. And so Marth can play the keep away game and the mid-range game against a lot of characters that want to get in, or can play the mid-range against people that kind of want to keep you out, but then can kind of be right next to you and be like, hey, I can dash forward till I can run inside the, you know, has a good out of shield option, has good edge guarding, even though again, sometimes it won't necessarily kill because you need tippers to kill. I definitely think Marth is the top character in the mid tier because again, some games Marth can look absolutely amazing. If you're getting down air F smashes, you're getting side B tippers, you're getting up air and back air tippers. Those will kill so early. But again, there are plenty of games that I've been watching of Marth where, oh, that should be a kill. Oh, they didn't get a tipper. And then suddenly the opponent lives until 160% and then hits them at 55 with a kill confirm because they have max rage and they die. So again, Marth, similar to Duck Hunt, is susceptible in that way, but also similar to Duck Hunt can randomly get kills super early but also has a sword and like is pretty mobile and stuff. So considering I put Marth at like bottom 10 last year, this is like bottom 20. So it's definitely a higher spot for him. Maybe he'll be in the seven out of 10 range next time. I'm not 100% sure. So this next tier is going to be upper mid tier. These characters you can all argue as high tier or you can all argue as mid tier. I didn't want to put just like a giant high tier because I feel like my high tier is already pretty big. So I wanted to at the very least separate it into like the characters that aren't quite like the lower mid tier. Again, if you want to call the tier below this low tier, technically, I just don't think based on the strength of those characters, like inherently they're low tier, whatever. This is just the next tier up. I'm calling it upper mid tier or the seven out of 10 characters, like the seven to the 7.9 type characters. First off, we're going to start with a fan favorite, Mewtwo. I do think Mewtwo has the potential to be better than this. It's just really hard to be consistent in a game where you have inconsistent things about you, right? Sometimes Mewtwo randomly just misses the ledge. Sometimes he bounces in weird areas. Of course, you have the tail hitbox, you have the light weight, and those combined are going to be pretty difficult, even though he has amazing things. Shadow Ball is great. His ledge trapping is great. He has one of the best command grabs in the game. It's also a reflector, so he does very well into other projectile characters with his own projectile 
Profile and the Reflector, very, very strong combination. His combos are a little inconsistent. You can get some stuff that's like basic, like down tilt into Nair into dash attack, but because of the nature of his Nair always going to send to one side, it's a little bit difficult to always confirm. The Nair multi-hits, if you end it before the end of the move, you know, can go left or right, which again, have huge differences in terms of how you follow up your combos or if it's going to lead to offstage and potentially a kill, or you're just going to get maybe 15% if you're right. He has amazing kill throws in terms of up throw and back throw. He has crazy mobility. This character is really, really threatening. However, he doesn't just like kill you enough like some other characters in this game. And of course, because he is light and also big, he is susceptible to, oh, he just got janked. Uh, he just got hit by this thing that wasn't supposed to work. And I also don't feel like he's great at getting off the ledge. He has teleport, but I feel like teleport is a lot more susceptible than it used to be because people are just kind of learning how to fight around it, whether they'll like go to roll distance and kind of wait for a teleport and then hit him if he does it. And then if not, just keep Mewtwo in the corner. It can be kind of difficult for him to get out of the corner. I think he's great if he's getting juggled because you just teleport to a platform or teleport to the the other side or just like you know double jump forever and fall and then just you know recover to ledge but again you're putting yourself in a position where you're not necessarily going to have a good time very solid character you know i was debating putting him higher in this part of the list but the character order doesn't really matter inside the lists or inside like the individual tiers uh at least in this tier I feel like this character and Mewtwo are surprisingly more compared than uh, I feel like they should be, but we got Ridley. They're both big characters that are kind of light for their size, that have really good poking forward airs and a very similar down tilt. Ridley is more so going to be like a touch of death type of character. He's trying to hit you off stage. He's trying to use his neutral B to hit tether recoveries. He's trying to forward air you off stage. He's trying to, you know, have big reads, big kills. If you watch all of the best Ridleys at the moment, whether it's Smub or Mezcal, I feel like those are the two main Ridleys, of course. Creepuba did, did well at SmashCon. They all kind of play big hit, big kill type play styles. And really is really, really good at that. His forward smash is super strong. His back air is amazing. Of course, if you get the hard read into like a side B, that's going to be great at just like eliminating stage position from your opponent. It's a little bit hard to edge guard this character because his up B is amazing unless you are like an elite level edge guarder. It's really hard to ledge trap him as well because he has multiple jumps as well as that command grab. So you have to be on your stuff to ledge trap him. And then of course he can just like ledge jump Nair and kind of, you you know, alleviate a lot of pressure from him. Of course, the negatives of Ridley are he doesn't have a great vertical disadvantage, in my opinion. And of course, he's big and really easy to combo, but he doesn't have the heavy weight of the super heavies like DK, K Rule, Bowser. So he's not going to be living as long as those characters that kind of are like, well, I'm going to get hit from 0 to 70, but that's only like half my stock. Ridley, that's not going to be the case. So he needs to make his hits count. And of course, in a game where the top, you know, echelon of characters have amazing neutrals, amazing advantages, he kind of just falls by the wayside unless it's a random matchup that he does very well. Like, I think he does decent versus Cloud because he edge guards the hell out of him. He does well versus Byleth. I definitely think Ridley is always threatening at basically all times because he can just, bam, hit you, explode, you're dead. And so you really have to be careful when it's this character. So again, 7 out of 10 has flaws, but is quite good. Speaking of characters that have flaws but are quite good, um, people are probably going to be mad at me for this one. We're talking about Krom. I think Krom is, you know, very good. He has the strengths of a top five character, right? If Krom had a good recovery, he is broken. He is absurdly powerful. Such a good character. However, if he's wrong on approaching, he can die. He's not good at getting off the ledge. He's not good at recovery. He has one of the worst recoveries in the game. And the thing is, it's not like a bad recovery, but sometimes there's there's some awkward positions where you can't really handle it. Like, Krom is either going to get back to stage with zero issue because he's like high and you're not really going to be able to mess with it, or he just has a straight up chance of dying against every character in the game. Every single character can edge guard Krom because every single character has the ability to just hit him on the way up out of his uppy. And if you're not going to uppy, then you have to deal with people just hitting your air dodge, which is quite easy for most characters, especially if there's not a mix up, right? Which there's not a mix up because you just get hit and die. Definitely not the worst recovery in the game, but I would definitely say bottom three. Prompt has amazing things, and realistically, he's on like the higher end of this tier, um, but I just like, I like a lot of the characters above, and a lot of the other characters have more results from solo mains, uh, surprisingly, because the only Krom that really does anything is Leon's secondary Krom from like the, the French Leon, uh, and he's a Lucina main, so question mark? And here we go, the main conversation of the last video is going to be better than Krom in my opinion, maybe, me sword fighter. So, 
I've learned a lot about me sword fighter since my last tier list. We had the Shishio video. I've been playing this character a lot. I played him like pretty seriously for about a month. I think this character has a lot of stuff. You have Eren, of course. You have Shishio, who also secondaries Dr. Mario. This character has like a decent amount of reps now and also is good. Of course, the Mii's have just the ability to switch up their moveset depending on the matchup. So, you know, I am a really, really big fan of the with punish type uh, character who's always able to like force interactions with Shuriken or like run away with Shuriken and then just like with punish people for jumping. You can with punish every sword character in the game depending on the matchup. You want fast out of shield options. You want hero spin. You want the multi slash uh, to kind of cheese people with, you know, susceptible recoveries like characters that don't have uh, hitboxes on their recoveries. You just kind of uppy them down and then they get sent under the stage and they just die. I think this character's combos are decent. Uh, of course, they have a lot of DI checks, especially when it comes to down tilt and down throw. Down throw up air is if you don't DI a wave and it's so fast, it's really hard to react to. If you don't, you're getting grabbed at 85, exploding. You're not living. Me Sword Fighter just has a lot of good normals. Back air is really good. It's just a smaller version of Cloud's back air. That's, it's still minus three and very strong. Down tilt is fantastic. Forward air is fantastic. Up air is amazing. A lot of the specials they use are really good, except Tornado. I don't think you should use Tornado on like any circuit. I think that sucks. His downer is one of my favorite moves in the game. He's a great edge guarder, great edge trapper. Uh, the biggest flaw of me, Sword Fighter, is honestly he doesn't really kill that easily unless he's getting either a DI check or an edge guard. Like he's not able to just win solidly in neutral with killing moves, right? His main killing moves, especially like when you're playing just solid neutral, are going to be back air, which is good but not fantastic. Or like you push someone to the ledge and like forward tilt them at the ledge. Those are mostly how you're going to be getting like your 150% kills. Of course, you do have a really high percent kill throw, like a last resort type of kill throw like Inkling does. I think this character is very, very good. It's just like the other Mii's, there's not really like one super solid player playing them. Like the most solid Mii player is uh, the other Mii, Mii Gunner with Capitancito. And uh, other than that, you don't really have a solo solid Mii player that's like a top player just because it's hard to be a top player in this game. Like it's not the character's fault. It's just really, really hard to be good. Next up is someone that I feel like a lot of people are also going to get mad at me for, but just like Pichu in the last video, this character, in my opinion, has just gotten slowly worse and worse over time, and again, it's still a 7 out of 10, I want to just preface, I think all these characters are still good, and that is Inkling. Inkling can't kill. Inkling, if you are not specifically getting an edge guard or you're not getting your up throw up air percents, you're not killing in this meta. I feel like people barely get hit by roller. I feel like people don't really get hit by jab locks anymore. It, I feel like it is so hard for Inkling to get kills. And the thing is, their neutral isn't amazing enough to kind of overcome that. I know that people are like, yeah, well, Inkling's neutral is broken. It's really good. But the problem is in this current meta, Almost everyone's neutral is better than theirs, at least like the upper echelon characters. And then the characters you think below that, that are like, well, they're like neutral is kind of sus. They also are just killing you in two or three hits. So you don't really get the opportunity to out neutral the best characters. And you also don't out punish the characters that are like high tier or even the rest of this tier, right? Like I'd be terrified that I was an Inkling player and I had to fight a Mewtwo or a Ridley. It would not be fun because Inkling is just so susceptible to, oh, oops, I didn't get a kill. I got rage killed. They're susceptible to hardcore zoning with projectiles, like with Samus and Young Link. They're susceptible to characters that are just going to hit you really hard or have amazing ground pokes or just don't care about the short hop delayed back air that Inkling's going to do. There are much better characters that can do short hop delayed aerials that are actually like kill moves or will set or like just do more damage. Inkling just kind of falls short in every aspect. Their best aspect is neutral, but neutral, again, I think punishes better than neutral, right? And even then their neutral isn't ridiculously good. It's just annoying if you you, like don't know how to deal with it but obviously neutral is informed by punish so you know if you're only going to get single hits here and there in neutral you're not even like getting advantage from them necessarily i don't really know exactly what you're getting there are still good inkling players of course you have colorado you have space who i feel like has been using inkling more uh like more recently i don't know if that's just like a, a character matchup thing that they're doing they're good again seven out of ten character i'd give them like a seven point if i was thinking of a character in their absolute strengths i do think inkling is somewhere in like 7.2 7.3 good character would be very good in any other game it's just Smash Ultimate is insane with the amount of characters with either higher 7s or 8s or 9s or 10s. Speaking of a character being higher, I know that I put this character quite low in my last tier list, and since then I have played them, they kind of match me quite well, and of course we're talking about Meta Knight. Meta Knight is one of those characters that has a decent neutral, right? You have good neutral tools with down air, neutral air, of course they have multiple jumps so they are able to play tricky, and then of course the character is a touch of death monster. He's an edge guarding monster. He's an advantage monster. So I think even though uh, they have flaws, they're still a really, really strong character. There's very few characters 
characters in this game that are either not susceptible to his combos or susceptible to his edge guarding. Most characters kind of have to deal with one of them. The ones that don't have to deal with either are the characters that just do well versus him, right? This character likes fighting floaty characters. This character likes fighting zoners that aren't like young links specifically, in my opinion. Likes big characters, can hit big characters, can edge guard, you know, that easy to edge guard characters like Fox or like Roy and Crom and stuff like that. Uh, just really only gets out echeloned by the like super good neutral and good punish type characters. And so in a game where like all of your meta matchups or all of the meta matchups are difficult for you, uh, that can be a little rough, right? But at the same time, still has good, you know, upper tier matchups with like Pac-Man and Rob, like can randomly get some big major upsets, even like Samus, right? Uh, but I don't think you're generally beating characters like Wolf or Kazuya, even though you can win those matchups with edge guarding or just like being solid. Like it's hard to beat a Yoshi or a Mario or characters that are just going to hit harder than you on average and have abilities to like pressure your disadvantage. And one thing I actually was surprised when I was playing Meta Knight, I thought his disadvantage was going to be a lot better, but Dimensional Cape can only do so much and multiple jumps if people are patient can only do so much that kind of like delay the inevitable unless they got impatient. So maybe a little bit worse disadvantage, but better strengths than I thought. Uh, so again, solid character, right? And if we're talking solid, we gotta talk about the heaviest character in the game. One of the better repped characters in this game, we're talking Bowser. Of course, the reps of this character being Hedo from Japan and Leon from, you know, New Jersey, both amazing Bowser players. Being able to live a long time is super important in this game right now. If you can prolong your death by one or two or three neutral interactions, that is fantastic. Or even like disadvantage, right? Like no matter how many times you're gonna hit Bowser in disadvantage, if you're not killing him, you have to do it again. You have to be ready for that downer. You have to be ready for him to just flame breath on top of you and deal you 35. Of course, Bowser's strengths are very apparent. He kills you very early. His two frames are amazing. His ledge pressure is amazing. His out of shield game is quite good. He has flame breath to two frame and just to like harass people off stage. He just kills you as one of the best foreigners in the game. Good neutrals overall. He's decently fast. Uh, he has great anti-airs when it comes to up air and up smash. He has a command grab that is frame six. So you're just going to die very consistently again this character uh, but the problem is the characters with better advantage states or like you know, I guess good advantage states that can combo him super hard sometimes just give him two neutrals of stock which is unfortunate. Bowser's just a very stressful opponent to play against and if you don't succumb to that stress because you are comfortable in the matchup or the matchup is just very good for you you're probably gonna be fine. Bowser has a lot of really bad matchups. You have Mario, you have Falco, you have Sora, you have Pikachu, you have Steve, you have like there are so many characters that just obliterate Bowser with no issue. I'm sure there's more that I haven't talked about. I know Peach is also very bad. I think Yoshi can be bad. Wario can be bad. Of course, if they interact and they interact wrong, Bowser can do really well. That's why Hedo is very consistent in Japan. That's why Leon has had some really, really good results. But that doesn't mean that the character's necessarily as good as some characters above them. We go from a big, beefy, Koopa into a scared, frightened little boy. We got Lucas. Lucas, of course, is one of those like theory top 15 type characters, right? If you hit every double jump cancel there and every single tech you're trying to do, this character has like incredibly gross, disgusting combos. Some of the best combos in the game, annoying zoning to deal with, really hard to hit off the ledge because he has ledge jump, double jump cancel there. Of course, he has magnets so he can deal with some zoners. He, you know, is decent at edge guarding. He has some of the best two framing in the game. This character has a lot of strengths. But the problem is, he has to do all those really difficult things all the time. It's not like a difficult character like Pikachu, for example, that can kind of play the game really simply against a lot of characters and then has to, you know, try hard in specific areas. Like, no, Lucas, his neutral is informed by his difficulty. It's not just his advantage. So his neutral and his combo game are super determined by that. And of course, the character has a mediocre disadvantage. He's not great at landing. He doesn't have great aerials for landing, like his nair or his downer just aren't particularly safe. He's definitely susceptible to getting hit by a sword character and getting up aired a billion times, right? Or if someone can preemptively hit that ledge jump before the Zare comes out, it's gonna be really hard for him to get off the ledge. So he can get hit by these characters with stronger advantage states and just explode. But sometimes hitting him that first time can be very difficult. It's why you've seen really strong players lose to Lucas players. I know Choco Taco has a lot of wins. Nitox from France or Nitox. It is really hard to be consistent with Lucas because the difficulty is everywhere. It's not just an advantage. It's not, hey, just you have to react to all these different things in combos of like, hey, this neutral, which is theory broken, you have to hit every dump, get double jump cancels there. You have to be so careful when you're getting close to people. Simple Lucas is not a good character. Complex Lucas is broken. But if you have to consistently be hitting every single thing and play perfect all the time, it, he's, he can't be super high. 
Next up is one of the scariest characters in the game with ridiculous combos on stage, one of the best throws for positioning in the game, and one of the best edge guarders. we got Jigglypuff. Of course, Jigglypuff right now probably has some of the best results we've ever seen from this character. Of course, Base Mage has been doing very well, multiple top eights last season. Hungrybox has been doing very well, and of course, you have Senra from Japan still putting in work. I know Senra took a set from at a local from Akola, the best player in the world. Puff is terrifying. Puff, in theory, has like easy to beat neutral, but the problem is any single time Puff hits you, a lot of characters are very scared of dying. She can either do like a billion percent on stage into like a one read rest combo type of thing. Uh, if you ever miss a tech, you're dead, or a lot of characters, even characters with decent recoveries, are still getting edge guarded by Puff. Puff is one of the elite edge guarding characters, like easily top five edge guarding, probably top three. There's so many ways to get your opponent off stage. And also, again, if you're ever wrong, if you ever get parried or read from a roll or a spot dodge or you know you have to get put on a platform you might get you might be getting rested you might be getting sing rest this character is so clutch i feel like the uh, the proportion of puff getting you know cheesed at low percents and puff cheesing people at low percents is very much in the puff cheesing people favor i know there are certain characters that cheese this character very very hard i know and of course puff has some bad matchups right yoshi Fox can be difficult, I think Sonic can be difficult, there are plenty of characters that can play a solid game and keep you out. But then again, one of those characters, or two of those characters you would honestly expect to have a good ratio with Puff, like Roy and Palutena, Base Mage has like winning records on Cola and I think Goblin and also Chag. So like this character can do really, really well against a lot of scary matchups. As long as you're not like a super mobile character with good hitboxes or a character that's just going to hit you, kill you, done. Puff can really put in work against most characters. This is terrifying. Like if I was playing not Pikachu or me Brawler, I think I'd be terrified of this character. We got the low tide city runner up character. We're talking about me gunner. Yes, I don't really think me gunner is that much better than me sword fighter just to get it out there. Uh, obviously me gunner has better results because Capitan Cito is insane, but me gunner has some sauce. You know what I'm saying? Me gunner has some of the best ledge trapping in the game, a great set of special moves that can vary depending on the matchup. Zoning just in general can be really difficult to deal with between the missiles and the bombs and the forward air movement and suddenly a dash attack and suddenly a back air. Me gunner randomly kills super early especially if you're running charge shot so if you are able to like hit someone's landing with a charge shot they're gonna die at 90 or 100 it's interesting most charge shot characters don't use their full charge shot because they want the mix-up to be able to shield or something like that and those moves are just better in neutral like Samus charge shot of course like Dark Samus which is the same thing or Mewtwo they're down to just like hold charge shot while people are approaching them being like eh, randomly you don't really want to shoot me gunners charge shot unless it's full because it's not good in neutral it's not like a combo tool like the other ones are so you're almost always exclusively going to have full charge shot which means you're consistently able to get kills at 95 or 100 if you hit them and still do like 35 and it's also really fast and it also hits the ledge because me gunners short this character's recovery can be really versatile because of the ability to turn around with most like some special of theirs into like a forward air into their uppy being amazing of course you should only run the kind of like good mobility uppy that hasn't ha that doesn't have a lot of lag because if you use either of the other two you are getting edge guarded the uh, of course like the offensive uppy in terms of the one that's a spike and a good out of shield option doesn't go far enough you will get edge guarded like consistently because you have to be very close to the ledge to use it and the one that like shoots the flame ball out from under it it's not a great out of shield option it does go far this technically but again it's very vertical so if someone is wrong and you like recovered early uh, you're just gonna be falling for too long and then end up getting hit for it anyway so basically you might as well just use the one you can aim of course, the biggest problem with this character is they don't really have combos. They have like one, two, three hit things, but for the most part, they are slowly whittling you down with forward airs and back airs and dash attacks. And of course, they might get like an up throw nair sometimes, right, at low percents. Uh, they don't really have a ton of kill combos unless it's like, oh, someone ran into like the strong missile of theirs into dash attack or into another move that was right there. They're just having to play, I hit you, I advantaged you, I got like 40%, we're back into neutral, but my neutral is good, right? And the problem with that, in my opinion, is that there are so many characters that just have guaranteed combos that are longer or more consistent damage. So me gunner, if you're not going to get those hits or someone's playing really well against your projectiles or they have a reflector, suddenly everything is way harder. I don't know if there's a single matchup other than maybe Dr. Mario because that character sucks that has a reflector that doesn't just destroy me gunner because I know Fox does very well hence why Captain Cito went Dr. Mario versus Light. Uh, I know Game & Watch does very well even though I know I guess Captain Cito did beat uh, Meister. Low, low Tide, Lost Tag, whichever one. 
So I think Gunner has a lot of good things, but again, it's kind of the susceptibility of, oh, if I'm not able to play neutral super, super perfectly, I'm going to struggle because uh, my disadvantage isn't enough and I'm not doing enough per hit to like warrant the fact that I have to just consistently play neutral. You can, I do think that me Gunner can struggle with a decent amount of the cast and of course can get clutched on super hard. Speaking of getting clutched on super hard, we're talking about arguably the clutchest character in the game with the craziest comeback potential other than like Lucario, and that's Luigi. This character can hit you and kill you from a billion hits all the time. It is so hard to count Luigi out in any matchup, whether it's the Belmonts or Samus or Sonic. It doesn't matter. This character can just get lucky and get a hit. Their advantage is crazy. Obviously, they have the best or second best combo game in the game. It would be like Kazuya and Luigi inherently. His hits can come from anywhere too. People are always like, oh my God, the grab, the grab, the grab. But like you get hit by a landing nair at 30 and you're gonna get like landing nair, fair nair, reverse up air, up air, back air. Like he has down throw back. Of course, down throw is crazy with the zero to deaths and down throw up B and down throw down B, insane, right? Down throw back air as well. Uh, but this character just does a lot of damage all the time. Of course, the biggest issue with Luigi is if it's a character uh, that can just kind of keep you out and wall you out on the ground, you're gonna struggle because Luigi has the worst air speed in the game. So jumping, not good for for this character unless you're able to do like the short hop fair fast falls air or short hop fair fireball or something like that but for the most part if you have to jump you're losing as this character so if a character can just eliminate your options on the ground whether it's with a big sword or with a projectile this character can struggle again has a lot of losing matchups but they're losing matchups in air quotes because luigi can just hit you and kill you right like samus luigi is supposed to be super terrible and then lugi beat both siski and quick recently at a tournament like maybe a couple months ago and those are two of like the four best Samuses in the world. So that's a really, really big deal. There have been a lot of Luigi's doing really well. Of course, Lugi being the most premier one at the moment, but there's good Luigi's in Japan, like Daru-kun. Zap's been doing really well in the States. Yeah, I mean, this character, terrifying, right? I don't want to fight against a Luigi. Like I'm, da like, I'm down because of matchups, but I'm not down for my mental because it is so stressful to play against this character. He's one of the most stressful characters to play against. So yeah, I think he's pretty good. We only got a couple of characters left in this tier, so let's go to the, I guess, third lowest, I guess the middle of the pack in terms of the Triforce. We are talking about Toon Link. Low key, Toon Link's a high tier. There's been one Toon Link I've been really, really scared of, like, ever. I know Japan, again, has a lot of good Toon Links. Don't remember their name. If they, if they hear me talking about them, they know who it is. I played you at Smash Con. You are so sick. They beat me in a money match, right? Toon Link just has a lot of tricks, right? You can be fast with Toon Link. You can be slow with Toon Link. You can hit people. It has good normals, right? Four Tilt is a very good normal. Good Sword Nair, Bear, Uppy, of course, going to be really strong. And, of course, the projectile game is great, right? Boomerang, Bomb into forward airs and up airs. The Add a Shield is good because you have Footstool Add a Shield into Bomb or just Z dropping bomb out of shield very very powerful very scary character hard to keep tempo against them because they're floating and they can kind of fall down and pick up bomb and throw bomb and kind of fall behind it and they have a zare to grab the ledge i feel like hitting them on the ledge isn't that easy either their forward air is so strong and they have really consistent setups into it because of bomb and boomerang you have great uh, just like random pokes like Zare's great for this character and down tilt so you have to either like run up to them because you're scared of them pulling a bomb or they're just going to like immediately dash attack you which is the only link that has a comboing dash attack so it's dash attack into up air dash attack into forward air if you're DIing in and if you're not going to be aggressive with them you're going to get thrown boomerang or have bomb in hand of course they don't have crazy combos like some other characters they don't have as intense ledge trapping or the strengths of some other characters so that's why they're here but they're, they're kind of one of those characters that like even if they don't have crazy strengths they also don't have a ton of flaws. Like a very consistent character, but not consistent sometimes just because of how crazy some of the characters above them are. And I've been talking a lot and very fast, so I need to take a deep breath. Just... <sighs> We're talking about Wii Fit next. Wii Fit, of course, compared to Toon Link, does have amazing strengths, right? They have Deep Breathing, one of the best single moves in the game because it's just an insane buff. The damage output of this character is crazy. The kill potential of this character is crazy. You can zone pretty effectively. It's hard to catch this character. But, of course, some of the awkward hitboxes and some bad matchups with really meta-relevant characters kind of hold Wii Fit down. I do think Wii Fit, if you want to argue for them to be in the 8 out of 10, the high tier category, I'm not complaining. I don't think that's necessarily wrong. If I wasn't playing a character like Pika or Game & Watch, I'd be terrified of this character. They can just make comebacks super consistently. They're one of the only characters that can heal reliably in this game, so positions can change in a moment's notice. If you're camping too much, they're just going to heal 2%, 2%, 2%. Suddenly, you know, they heal 15 or 20% in a stock, and 15 to 20% is a big deal. They have incredible aerials in terms of their neutral air, their up air, and their back air. I think their forward air is also good. They have random niche, super good matchups in the top tier, in my opinion. 
opinion, like against Rob and against Snake. We also have just a ton of Wii Fit trainers in the United States because you have John Numbers, you have Varun, you have Noodle. They're so good pop and just so many more. There's a ton of good Wii Fit trainers randomly. It's really hard to get top eight with this character just because you have to run into so many, like there's so many characters that are good in this game and if you're not playing the perfectly correct one, it might be a little rough. But I think this character is honestly well positioned. It's just, you know, sometimes you want to camp and you give up too much stage and sometimes you want to be aggressive, but like the character you're fighting has too good out of shield options or a little too fast. So it's kind of one of those tug and pull characters similar to Link, where it's like, I want to be doing this like really good stuff, but if I, you know, try to focus on that aspect, then I'm giving up some other really good aspect and it's really hard to know what to do. So that's kind of where I weave it lands in this like upper seven area. And I did just mention a different character that has a tug and pull and they're coming up. Link is, in my opinion, the next best character, the next to highest character in this tier. There's one more character in this upper mid tier. I think Link, theoretically, like Lucas, is broken. He has infinites, he has crazy combos, he has some of the best moves in the game in terms of his neutral air, uh, mostly his neutral air, and also Bomb is crazy. Of course, Boomerang is amazing, just like I said with Toon Link. This character kills so early. He just has so many kill moves between forward tilt and forward smash, and up tilt and up smash, and down smash and up B, and forward air and up air and down down air. It's crazy. This character just kills all the time, consistently, forever. But the problem is, again, if you're focusing a lot on bomb pressure, you don't have bomb to recover. If you're not focusing on bomb pressure, then you don't have as consistent out of shield options or as scary combos. So you're really kind of trying to thread the needle of, is it should I play with bomb, should I not play with bomb? And that constant difficulty in a game and constant decision making, if you make the right one, cool. It might not work anyway. Someone might just kill you normally or get like a spike so you don't have bomb to edge guard because it doesn't matter. But then if you try to use bomb, and you get edge guarded, you go, oh man, like I died so early because I was trying to kill them super early. So you kind of either are playing for consistency or for like advantage, which is unfortunate because I think Link is really, really good. I think he's super cool. He's a character that I wish I put time into that I probably won't because I don't care quite enough to. And I don't know of any other super top Link players that are consistently just trying to play this character without switching to Young Link or just switching to a different projectile or a different brawler type character. So there's literally better brawlers, better zoners, and better sword characters, which is why Link and Toon Link kind of just like fall by the wayside because there's stronger variants of those characters in the game. So people have just picked them up. We're dipping our toes into the traditional fighting game characters and the weakest one in my opinion, which hasn't changed. I thought this character was weak for quite some time, at least relative to their counterparts. And we're talking about Ken. When he is perfectly working, is super flashy, has amazing combos, can kill super early. But the problem is your kill moves are inconsistent because they can fall out. Like you can fall out of short you can, or just like whiffs sometimes that it absolutely shouldn't. Even in the middle of the move, he's so much more susceptible to SDI than the other fighting game characters. And because of that, he just lowers his damage output overall. Again, he can do decent damage, but why would you sometimes do, you know, 30 damage and sometimes do 50 when you could just like always do 45 you know what I'm saying and again you might just suddenly die right you forgot that he has his roundhouse that will kill you in the middle of down tilts because it's a special move as opposed to reuse which I think is his hold jab yeah that's gonna happen you might suddenly get air to aired by his shory you can that you weren't ready for so he kills you at 70 for jumping that is absolutely true but if you aren't thinking of Ryu and playing Ken SDI is better against him he's less consistent of a character and because he doesn't have Tatsu as a single hit move um he's going to lose a kill option compared to Ryu that is like really important because it sends vertically, right? So even though I do think Ken is a good character at a 7.9, he is still the worst of the fighting game characters and that just kind of shows you the fighting game characters are quite good in this game. We are going into high tier. These are all the characters you would consider to have really good shots at making long tournament runs. Maybe not tournament winners, but also a lot of tournament winners because we already had some tournament winners in the mid tier. So let's get into the first character into high tier, which is going to be Rosalina and Luma. Rosalina took a long time to actually get relevant because this character is incredibly difficult. One of the most technically demanding characters, especially in neutral in the game with a huge plethora of attack cancels and a bunch of setups with how to make Luma go certain directions and a bunch of these different little combos that honestly don't do that much. But the thing is, hitting this character is so difficult. I feel like a lot of times now we are focusing on either really strong advantage or really good disadvantage. She can kill you with edge guarding. Her up air is really good. Of course, she does a decent amount of damage with juggles. She has, of course, neutral air to kind of cover long spaces. Like if you try to like directional air dodge around her, she can just nair and hit you. And of course, because she's so floaty, a lot of times when you are trying to hit her, if you did kill Luma, 
she can just kind of like jump to a platform, jump around twice, and suddenly Luma's back because she takes three to five seconds to land. This character definitely plays a war of attrition, which is why you see DeBuzz really flourish with this character because he's one of the best players in the world at that. Uh, and this character has like a weird meta matchup spread, right? I feel like before she was worse because there were a lot more like Roy's doing really well and Roy was one of her worst matchups. But Alex actually has a decent amount of good matchups in the top tier. She does pretty decent versus Steve, even though she doesn't win. She probably beats Game & Watch. She does well versus the fighting game characters. She does well versus like the rushdown characters other than like the really, really good ones like Fox and Roy. Kind of has like her section of this is a bad matchup in meta and then has a section of this is a good matchup in the meta. So if you go to like a major, you have a high likelihood of maybe running into one of your problem matchups, but a lot of also good matchups considering the character differentials are kind of splitting. Like less people are playing Aegis, I feel like more people are playing Sonic and Game & Watch uh, and Steve and Rosa does decent versus those characters. Basically this character is just a huge knowledge check when it comes to playing against her and of course you know us as the opponents of the Rosalina players will never know as much as the Rosalina players themselves so we're going to get checked probably once to seven times maybe like a stock with random little things and then by the time you learn enough to like maybe do well uh, you lose and then the next time you play a Rosalina player they have new tricks and new setups so it's really really difficult to stay ahead of this character. Next up is the character with probably the biggest jump in my tier list from last time. We're going Ice Climbers. I kind of used to view things as, oh, you have a really, you have a lot of bad matchups. Uh, you can't be a good character because you'll run into them at some point. But then suddenly, again, the meta kind of shifted, like I talked about with Rosalina. Ice Climbers' bad matchups aren't super common, although Steve is. There have been a lot of Ice Climbers doing really well recently, in spite or regardless of a lot of their bad matchups. Because again, Ice Climbers' matchup spread is very polarized and you have some incredibly good matchups like against most of the close range characters like Fox, Brawler, Game & Watch and then you have the really bad matchups in terms of like the Belmonts and Snake and Steve but if you can run into a tournament or have a tournament where you're not running into those bad matchups you can do really well and we've seen that because of the plethora of times that Big D has got in top eights or better than that. It is kind of insane to see a character that like technically has a bunch of bad matchups and a bunch of exploits just be able to do really well. And you know, Ice Climbers definitely has a place in the meta. They do so much damage. They have a crazy advantage. They have good neutral. They have a bunch of setups. Again, it's like a knowledge check. And if you're not ready, you're gonna die at 50 or 60 because that's just what the character does. We return to an up and coming player. And by up and coming player, I mean a player that got second at a major this year, boasting the Incineroar. This character should not not be good, right? Slow, doesn't have like amazing frame data, has an exploitable recovery, but also this character gets into players heads. The side Bs, the early kills, the edge guarding. This character is terrifying, so if you aren't a 100% composed player, you're going to struggle. SkyJ has won so many bad matchups because he rattles the opponent, because he gets those one or two reads, and again, in a meta where a lot of times people are trying to extend their life by like not getting hit in the scary places, Incineroar will hit you in the scary places. He will read you in the corner because you're backing up because you don't want to fight the Incineroar, and then you're going to die at 70 you have to be careful of how you play advantage because if you're wrong and you get revenge suddenly that 75 death percent threshold becomes 50 or that down tilt will combo into forward tilt at 30 and kill you. He's terrifying. Again, can you exploit this character and make him look really bad? Absolutely. You can do that with most characters, though. So Incineroar isn't really special in that regard. And then the character has really good two-framing. Of course, you know, strong advantage as long as you don't have really, really high airspeed. So yeah, Incineroar, pretty good, pretty scary. I would definitely give him an 8 out of 10 at this point in the game. Again, theoretically, he's more in the 7s, but he's so scary that it doesn't really matter. He's becoming a really popular counterpick character, so he's becoming more and more prevalent in the meta, which is so weird to say because I thought this character would kind of stay in relative obscurity, but he's not. I've been hyping up a lot of these characters, being like, yeah, they're better than I expected. This character, in my opinion, sucks. Asterisk, relative to a lot of the places that most people put him, we're going Sephiroth. Sephiroth, of course, has his place in the meta, right? He is really good at walling people out. He has a good matchup with Steve, which is pretty rare in this game, but I feel like he just kind of struggles. A lot of Sephiroth is 
playing really good neutral and just hoping that people don't parry or that you're able to sneak in your frame 15 to 17 moves consistently uh, to beat your opponent, which is pretty difficult. This character's frame data is just a big struggle. I think he overall has the worst frame data in the game, or at least somewhere around that. Of course, that doesn't mean he's without strengths, right? He is high tier. He has ridiculous two framing. He has side B, which is a projectile that beats projectiles and kind of sets up some unique situations. He's pretty di difficult to edge guard if you're not getting him off stage, like at really low angle. If he gets one wing, you're not really edge guarding him. Um, it's really difficult to two frame him. And of course, he is probably the best character at ledge play in the game because of his like forward air poking the wall. So it's really difficult to keep him in the corner, which is probably his biggest advantage. That and of course, one wing is ridiculous. But again, he's not always going to be getting one wing on equal stocks. Sometimes it does last a long time. I don't feel like it's enough for me to put him in top tier. I just see this character struggling with a lot of the meta because they're faster or they have better advantages or they just like out mobility him or just kill him at ridiculously low percents with like a zero to death. I don't really know his matchup spread. I don't see that many Sephiroths do particularly well nowadays because Ken mostly plays Sonic. Now Tweak mostly plays Diddy Kong. Ned, I think is switching to Cloud. So lost a lot of his high level reps, but I just think this character overall isn't just like controlling the game the way a lot of people talk about him controlling the game. So that's why I put him in like the lower high tier area. Europe, get out your pitchforks. We're talking about Greninja. Whoops, Greninja. Great combos, good advantage, decent edge guarding. He of course has one of the unique edge guarding tools in his up B or hydro pump. He's really mobile in the in on the ground, right? So he has great ground movement. So if you lose to ground movement, you lost to Greninja. But of course, I do think that the lack of a normal grab, therefore his out of shield options being bad, his out of shield options being bad in general, unless you're just going to footstool down air everyone for almost no damage in this game. That's not really good enough, in my opinion. His short hop is kind of high. It's hard to go over things unless you're going to hard read these things, like you can't react and like, oh, they're going to do this and jump over it and hit them because your short hop is too high to actually hit a lot of those landing aerials. Uh, on someone doing like a fast poke, like a Pika or Mithra down tilt, some of the faster dash attacks, that's hard to do. But that doesn't mean the character doesn't have stuff, right? You have dash attack into combos, you have down tilt into up smash, down tilt into forward air, dash attack into forward air. You know, you get a lot of pretty early kills with this character. Of course, he has a counter. So on some recoveries that are a little slower, but have hitboxes on them, you can counter and spike your opponent. Uh, he can deal with some projectiles by countering them and kind of going into them. He has like some uniquely good matchups with like a game and watch because that matchup is just really good because up air drag down kind of gets gets so much damage on Game Watch. I remember Stroder beating Meister like a long time ago before the pandemic. But again, I just basically, Greninja is one of those characters that like is really good, but kind of just gets outclassed by the people above him. It's not really like Greninja is bad. It's just like Greninja is good, but these people are better. So yeah, I think he has some flaws, but like every character in high tier has some flaws still, but he's pretty good. He's a good character. We're staying blue, daba dee, daba die, and this character will make you die. We're talking Mega Man. Mega Man has been having a resurgence recently in the past like six to nine months. You have Peebnut doing really well, MPG's doing really well. Tweak was playing the character for a little bit. I don't know if that's staying. I think Kamame has been playing Mega Man uh, a little bit more recently as well. Uh, this character is like really unique in terms of their meta position because they do good versus some characters, but do awful versus others. I know Mario and Pikachu are both really bad matchups for Mega Man, but at the same time, characters characters like Roy and Joker, they do decent against. They have good out of shield options. Metal Blade is always interesting. They have good disadvantage because of Leaf Shield, because the Leaf Shield is just a broken move. Weird pressure with up airs, and you know, he's always kind of an off tempo compared to a lot of the characters in this game. Uh, he has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, like the Leaf Shield, Metal Blade, Toss Cancel into Grab. We've seen the like MPG and Peeb not have great success with that. Again, the biggest problem I do have with Mega Man is he doesn't really have a clutch factor other than like Metal Blade into Up Tilt, which is decent decently easy to play around now that more item characters are common in the meta, people are more used to it now, uh, as opposed to like, it was just Rob, but the Robs weren't good enough to really be scared of it, and Diddy Kong wasn't relevant before. I don't know, Mega Man is a character that, you know, nickels and dimes his way into victories, of course has decent edge guarding, you know, good setups and stuff like that, so I'm not pretending this character has nothing, but I feel like a lot of the characters above have like better combos, so if you're not playing the perfect neutral, kind of like what I said with Sephiroth, if you're not playing the perfect neutral and consistently outplaying your opponent, you might just and take 80. Uh, and that's not very good for him. He does have an exploitable recovery unless they just recover high in Leaf Shield and the person can't beat Leaf Shield with an up air. But yeah, Mega Man is honestly kind of scary. Um, like, personally, I'm not scared of him because Pika has a good matchup, but I don't think a lot of people want to see Mega Man's in their path, so that must mean something's good about them, right? This character has been called the most honest character in Smash Ultimate, with nothing excelling, and they are all, of course, wrong. We're talking about Pit. 
I have thought Pitt is pretty good for a while. I think I put him in mid-tier in my last tier list, to be honest, like upper mid-tier, uh, like kind of like in this area. But then Zachary happened. Listen, I love Zachary. I may be biased, but he showed that this character actually has some ridiculous strengths. Of course, the neutral of this character has always been above average, and I think people saying otherwise is kind of ridiculous. You have a great dash attack, good dashes in general, a good dash grab, and of course, one of the best neutral airs in the game. Like, in neutral, it's amazing. It is safe on shield. It's like minus five if you do it perfectly, I think. It is a combo move at lower percents into dash attack. It sends into really good positions otherwise. Uh, this character just has a lot of damage output but not necessarily in true combos, but he has a really good advantage. Multiple jumps will kind of lead you there. But this character, honestly, where they shine, surprisingly, is their advantage. I always thought their advantage was kind of mid. Uh, Zachary showed off like kind of ledge trapping with back air and dash attack, making it really, really difficult for his opponents to get back to ledge, even characters with good disadvantages. He's been making people struggle on the ledge because of that back air dash attack. Of course, like you then have like the forward throw versus down throw mix-ups at higher percents where they're going to DI in and get down throw up aired because you were DIing in for forward throw or you're DIing out for down throw and then you get forward thrown at 120 and die. Uh, but the character just like is positioned really well in the meta. I don't think he has any terrible matchups. I don't think he has any really like dominant matchups, but at the same time, that means that you as a player can just beat your opponent basically in any matchup. Like, I can't imagine, I don't know what the worst matchup for Pit is. I would think someone like Sonic, but at the same time, Zachary has like a winning record on every Sonic he's played in Japan, and you know, I'm pretty sure he's beat T, he's beat a lot of the Japanese top players, I don't know if he's played Mia, I think he's weird to counterpick. But that doesn't mean he's not amazing to main because he doesn't really lose to anyone that bad. He can just win, all the time. Put your phones away and take out your textbooks. We're talking about Hero Next, the only character that you have to literally read. He's an amazing anti-zoner. Hero beats literally every zoner in the game. You know, if you're running away from Hero, that means that Hero is able to get buffs like Oomph, Accelerattle, Bounce. Uh, he's able to heal. He's able to throw out like unreactable moves that do 30%. He has good out of shield options in terms of his up B out of shield mostly. It's just a get off me option. And Hero mostly needs get off me options to roll his spells, get buffs or good other things and make it difficult. Of course, having to look away from the game itself to look at his menu, both as the Hero player and the opponent of the Hero, is really awkward and it kind of makes you feel uncomfortable because if you just decide to be lazy and you're like, I don't want to read that one, that's going to be the thwack that kills you at 40% because he got good RNG. That's going to be the sizzle that you couldn't react to or the kaboom that kills you at 80 because you were DIing wrong. It's one of those like, in theory, he's not as good as this, but because of what he does in a tournament setting against these players by making you scared, making you have to read, making you uncomfortable, it is really, really stressful to play against Hero, kind of like Incineroar, except then he has a sword and, you know, has decent mobility and can have amazing mobility sometimes, beats all the zoners in the game. Like, this character does struggle a little bit in the mid-range, uh, like if you're just playing passive mid-range, like close enough that you can run up and hit them for going from menu, but far enough away that they're not really able to do things like forward tilt or dash attack or forward or stuff like that. It's just hard to stay composed in that because if you're wrong once and you like dash in and you get flame slashed because you were a little too slow, that's going to be rough or get like snoozed into forward smash at 50 and die, that kind of sucks get back into Street Fighter because we are talking about the second Shoto being Ryu. I do think Ryu is a bit better than Ken, right? This is like eight or nine characters of a gap. Results wise, the Ryus are doing significantly better because you have Ashimo doing amazing in Japan, consistently getting like top eight at their majors and super majors. Aiken, who did really well in his European tour, got like second at a European major recently. Uh, I think also like got like ninth or 13th at Terra, so like still did pretty good. Consistent damage, of course, has the auto turnaround, so rolls are useless versus him and cross-ups are useless versus him. He has a comeback factor, right? Because he has rage and he does a ton of damage with his combos, so you're never really comfortable versus him. Ridiculous output or damage output has good projectiles, so he can kind of play the zoning game if, you know, the person doesn't really have any. Uh, has, again, decent matchups in the top tier, especially against the, you know, close quarter combat characters like Fox and Mario. His killing is super consistent because it is harder to SDI out of his moves compared to Ken. So like down tilt into Tatsu, down tilt into Shori, you are going to kill a lot earlier. And it can be a struggle to keep away from this character, like legitimately. Even though he isn't fast, he controls so much space just with his neutral air and with his buttons that it's kind of hard to run up on him. It's kind of hard to run away from him unless you're just blatantly only trying to run away the entire game. Uh, but I don't think a lot of characters have large amounts of success with that. So. I don't know, he's good. He's a good spot in the meta. I think Ryu's really solid. Again, he's not as good or explosive as the other two fighting game characters, so he's still lower than them, but he's a really good character. Speaking of explosive, we have the Smash 4 Devil in Bayonetta. 
This character has been getting a lot better results. This character has their meta developing, right? All the combos and the single hit uppies are becoming relevant again, which God, I don't want that to happen. Does a ton of damage and everyone was always like, oh, the damage doesn't matter because they don't kill you. And then the bandanas are starting to learn how to kill people that aren't playing very, very passive all the time, which means that now that 80% does matter. Of course, if you run into a witch time, you're gonna die early. You can get edge guarded. Uh, but if you're like an ultimate pro, I don't know if you have all of those SDI flow charts down or like just like understanding it inherently because that's honestly a lot of information and very difficult and we needed to know that in Smash 4 or we died at zero. Whereas like Bayonetta kills you at like 40 sometimes or like if you get caught in a platform or something like that. She kind of like plays the mental game with you. Of course, has a good disadvantage because she can just ABK and dive kick around. You know, she does have that extra lag when she uses more special moves, but it's still like most characters aren't really going to be able to run across the entire stage and hit her. That's pretty unique to like the very fast characters like Fox, Sonic, Pika, stuff like that. But I think her good edge guarding kind of puts her in a more explosive spot in the meta because edge guarding, in my opinion, is really valuable because if you can lower the amount of time that your opponent is alive, that would be really good. And she can do that without necessarily killing your opponents off of the top, just with like slow and steady edge guards. Again, she's kind of difficult to ledge trap because you have to respect ABK and ledge jump dive kick and just like which time in general. So sometimes the landings are a little bit like you think you can hit it, but you have to wait that split second longer. And then they do something different that you weren't expecting. Then you have to run across the entire stage and still have to respect the witch time and stuff like that. It can be kind of annoying against her. So yeah, I think Bayonetta is like a decent spot in the meta. Again, she's not top tier. She's not top 15 or whatever that people are saying sometimes, but she's good. She's a good character. Speaking of a character that deals you 0 to 60 in one hit, we are talking about the Riptide 2022 champion character being Tilde and Falco. Falco hits so hard. He has such good combos. He has amazing routes to do so much damage and kill opponents ridiculously early. I think characters that kind of hit you really hard, even if their neutral is a little bit simplistic, are really, really strong nowadays. Because even though it is a little bit one dimensional in terms of you think up tilt, of course, that doesn't mean you have to only go for up tilt. You can still do chip damage with lasers and forward airs. He has a great out of shield option with neutral air. He has really strong footstool out of shield with Let's do a lot of shield up B that does like 35 for some reason. He has amazing edge guarding. I talked just talked about with Bayo. Edge guarding is really important in my opinion because you can lessen the length of characters that live a long time. That's why characters like certain characters that I will get into in the top tier are really strong because it's really hard to edge guard them. Kind of like Bayo has a decent recovery, decent disadvantage, not as good as Bayo's, but you know, has ridiculous killing, right? Because you have up tilt back air, uh, up tilt up air, edge guarding, down tilt's a good kill move. I know that on the taller characters that are like light like I think like Steven Zero Suit uh, and I think there's a couple more examples you can get fair drag down into up smash his up smash is just good in general as an anti-air it's so good uh, even if it doesn't maybe work in front of him that well you can really only beat Falco if you have better combos than him which aren't honestly a lot of characters or you just keep him disadvantaged forever uh, or like edge guard him which again not a lot of characters currently are edge guarding so he's just in a really good spot right now. We just talked about good killing. Let's go the opposite way with a character that kind of struggles to kill sometimes. We're going to go with Sheik. The biggest problem with Sheik is the fact that if you play to trade with this character, it can be a struggle for her. A lot of characters can out trade Sheik. And of course, if she doesn't trade and she's just playing perfectly, yeah, she's amazing. This game is a lot about staying solid and not getting clutched on and getting your solid kills. And Sheik has kill setups, of course. You have the updraft with the up airs. You have drag downs into uh, down smashes and forward smashes. She can edge guard. She has needles bouncing fish. Like, she's not without killing. Sheik is better at killing by, like, a significant amount than, like, Bayonetta. But the problem is, when you're playing neutral as Sheik, uh, you are still struggling with characters that are swinging big hit hitboxes that will just raw kill you, right? Like, Sheik doesn't have a raw kill move. She has kill setups. So if you aren't go able to get those, uh, you know, those kill setups, then she struggles to kill. And a lot of characters can just be like, I'm just gonna throw out a kill move. I'm gonna throw out a Rob backer or a Steve backer or a Peach backer or a Snake up tilt or whatever random kill move you have that can make it really hard for Sheik to contend in the neutral at high percents. She is really, really bad at last stock, last hit situations. She has to keep control the entire game. And in my opinion, her control isn't good enough for that because she doesn't have like crazy disjoints. She has her speed and has good frame data. But if someone just guesses your timing right, it's gonna be a struggle. And again, that's to say that she's not top tier. She still has a ton of control in general. She has needles, good frame data, of course. So she can play around a lot of characters, especially the slower characters that are sometimes even scary to get hits. She can just dance around them and not care at all. But I do think the lack of just raw kill moves is going to put Sheik in high 
high tier instead of top tier. Basically trade everything I just said that was good about Sheik, take it out, but then talk about a sword and raw kill moves. We're talking about Corrin, one of the most like results, you know, burst of characters in recent times. This character has a lot, right? Solid neutral because good frame data plus sword. Does not have the mobility to dance around people, but is surprisingly mobile because of back air and of course the large threat of pin. So if you have to respect a large threat range because of like full hop pin or ground pin, then you're kind of playing at a range where, you know, Corn's not really threatened, so she can run up on you or like short hop and pressure with forward air or neutral airs and stuff like that. Uh, she doesn't have good out of shield options in terms of frame data, but she does in terms of range. And this character does damage, and this character kills you. Every single move I feel like this character has either sets up for a kill or kills you because you have the kill moves in terms of pin and up air and back air, and of course, like forward smash. And then you have the combo moves like nair and forward air and down tilt uh, that are just kind of scary against this character. I feel like Corn is good, right? Korn's, in my opinion, a really good character after all these buffs, and a lot of the Korn players are now showing it because the character's damage output is ridiculous, the consistency is really good, has one of the scariest two frames in the game that, of course, is non-committal as hell with pin, um, has decent edge guarding with back air. If someone has to recover low, like a Ness, or someone with like a slower recovery has to recover low, you can just downer them and trade stocks. You, of course, have the counter on some recoveries, although the counter's pretty bad in this game. I really feel like Korn only struggles with heavy zoners, like characters like Samus and probably probably like Pac-Man, but at the same time, uh, hit them once, keep them in the air forever because this character's advantage is really good so you can always win, right? Like, Corrin is one of those characters that we kind of talk about, like, has just such good advantage so it doesn't matter if your neutral is subpar in a matchup. Hit them once, deal them 50, keep them in the air or on the ledge because Corrin can do both really, really well. Are you okay? No, you're probably not if you hear that. We're talking about Terry next. Terry, honestly, like, this might be an underrating of Terry. I think this character is honestly getting kind of ridiculous. Of course, has a great comeback factor with Go because you have uh, Power Geyser and Buster Wolf, which are just ridiculous. This character's damage output overall is really good. Uh, they're starting to optimize his combos, not in terms of just like jab, jab, power dunk, but in terms of like Nair's and up airs getting like ridiculous combos. Nair into Burn Knuckle is a silly combo. He has really good ledge trapping. He has decent neutral. He has a good burst option in terms of crack shoot, so it's hard to camp against him. Has auto turnaround still, so you can't really cross him up, even though he doesn't have like the spam down tilts like Ryu and Ken do, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, this character has like good shield safety with his aerials, he has a decent amount of mobility. Literally, Terry's biggest flaw is the fact that he can't drop through platforms and hit you, so like if you poke him from under a platform, you have to be ready for him to run off platform and do a move, uh, which is unlike a lot of characters that can drop through the platform and do a move, and if you don't really know what I'm talking about, I actually have a video about it uh, that you can click up here. He's, he's just a scary character, does a ton of damage, kills ridiculously early with or without Go, and then of course with Go, he kills like ridiculously, ridiculously early, so yeah. This next character is, of course, still incredibly strong, but just kind of has lost favor in the meta and is more now of a counterpick character. But God, what a counterpick character he is. We're talking about Olimar. DeBuzz and Shutone don't main this character anymore. DeBuzz maining Rosa and Shutone maining Aegis. Uh, so Olimar kind of comes out as a counterpick in the two most prevalent Olimars, right? But that doesn't mean the character is not ridiculous. He's just really high maintenance in every single matchup, right? Struggles versus Swords, which is the biggest thing. He struggles versus Cloud, versus Aegis, versus literally every sword character, not every sword character in the game, but most of the sword characters in the game. He's light, so he can get blown up by characters that just have really strong kill moves. He is really bad at getting off of the ledge, so if you are on the ledge versus strong ledge trapping characters, you can kind of struggle unless your name is Samus, because that matchup is like 80-20. Uh, but yeah, this character is honestly mostly used as a counterpick, because Olimar has some really strong matchups in meta, like as I mentioned, Samus, you know, has his spots here and there, does well versus Snake, like Zero Suit, and Diddy Kong, Long, but at the same time, he's not like beating the very top tiers in this game. I kind of just struggles with like the top tier of the game, like the top 10 or 12 characters. And of course, those are going to be the most common characters. You're struggling against most of meta, but are good on the people that do well against those top characters that therefore they are good because of it, like Samus and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, Olimar is a great counterpick character in terms of his matchup spread, but he does struggle in a decent amount of matchups, so I don't know if he's good as a actual meta threat. So yeah, weird spot for the little guy. 
Speaking of little guys, we're talking about Ness. People always give me shit for putting Ness super, super high, but like we have more Ness results than like ever before. We have Gact, who's been doing really well. We have Send, who's been doing really well. You have Atata, who's doing really well. You have Beastly, who is a Ness and Diddy Kong player who does really well. He has Infinites, he has really ridiculous combos. Of course, he has amazing aerials and air drift and pressure and advantage. He has some of the best two framing in the game with down smash and up smash, as well as PK fire. He has good ledge trapping he is one of the best advantage tools in the game in pk thunder just like you don't have to like hate yourself with it just like the ball in the tail it's so good it can limit people so much literally the only flaw of ness is a no double jump having to recover that's it like that's it that's his only flaw it's a big flaw. I mean, also, like, he can sometimes struggle with, like, swords that are going to keep him out with, like, you know, cloud back air, Lucina forward airs, and stuff like that. But at the same time, he does so much damage when he gets in that, honestly, those don't matter as long as they're not killing him. But the characters that hit him out of his double jump because you got greedy and wanted to, like, double jump PK fire or double jump magnet, they hit you out of it, and then suddenly now you're in disadvantage without a double jump. That is where the character struggles. But at the same time, I'm saying struggles, and by that I mean, like, oh, no, they're only getting top three and five at majors and regionals consistently. Like, Gact is doing ridiculously well in Japan overall, has a lot of strong wins, good placements, Send has been killing it in the regional game, of course, as always, also did, like, pretty well at SmashCon, I think got, like, 13th or, like, 9th or something like that, did very well. But yeah, Ness is a really good character, so, yeah, I think he's super strong. I think it could be top tier, just all these characters above, like, I think a lot of the, especially the next couple characters, outside of the literal next one, people are gonna be like, yeah, no, they're top tier, Esam, you're dumb. So, welcome to Smash Ultimate. Probably the placement that people will disagree with me the most in this tier, other than like maybe Terry being too low, is Captain Falcon being up here. We talk about advantage being so important in this game. Falcon has one of the best advantage states in the game. His up air combos into itself forever. He has ridiculous combos. He's one of the biggest benefactors of IDJ combos. He can kill you so early off of a side B, off of a nair, off of a grab. He has good edge guarding when it comes to his up B and his back air and his nair. He has good ledge trapping when it comes to his jab and his nair and his back air and like falcon kick He has random burst options that you have to be ready for he has mix-ups in disadvantage It's so actually hard to keep him disadvantaged because also this character trades his hitboxes are pretty good So he trades pretty frequently if you aren't a sword character He is very fast and people go like oh, but his back dash who cares about his back dash one You can just slingshot now and it's not really that big of a deal But two it only matters if you're like playing the scramble in a defensive way Just side B and get super armor instead of trying to dash back and then you hit your opponent and kill them people just don't pay attention to japan and then listen to what fatality says because he doesn't believe in the character that much but this character's broken he's so good first we're going to be talking about byleth of course MKLeo's Byleth, right? How many majors has this character won? Riziasu's still playing with this character a lot. There are a lot of Byleth players, whether they're mains or secondaries. The character's very, very popular in meta. Of course, his character's strengths are ridiculous. The corner pressure of this character is dumb, with Nair into drop off forward air, back airs in general, forward airs in general. The spacing of this character is very good, with then the, the burst random Nairs you have to be ready for, which can be very, very difficult for a lot of characters to deal with. Of course, this character is slow, so sometimes you will get walled out and kind of chased away, but it doesn't have the benefit of a counter like Incineroar does to, like, you know, deal with the projectiles just by itself. Be like, oh, you can't shoot a Samus charge shot at me because I'll just counter it, you know, if I'm just standing away from you. So Byleth actually does have to approach. Of course, approach being generous because of the mid-range of the character with, you know, forward air and back air and side B and stuff like that. This character has a very good edge guarding game because of the drop off into up B, just spiking characters or you know, getting up B into back air. Uh, character kills you ridiculously well all the time. He has shield break setups. He has so much good stuff. The only problem with this character is, in my opinion, his disadvantage isn't great. And in my opinion, he's also not good in getting off the ledge as long as you respect, like, a little bit of distance. Violet's biggest weakness is he doesn't have a good hitbox below him, other than, of course, down air. But that's down air, and it's really slow. So you can just kind of harass him there, force him to air dodge, and then hit him for it afterwards. And again, in a game where a lot of characters have ridiculous advantage states, I mean, Byleth honestly being one of them, even though it's like less broken than some other ones that we're going to talk about, especially in top tier. Uh, I think he just like loses the damage war sometimes. Of course, that doesn't mean you can't win. We've literally seen this character win more than we've seen most characters win, especially like the number of majors. Like Violet has won more majors than almost any character in the world, probably being outclassed by like Steve Joker, maybe because of Leo's like original Joker performance. But I think that's it. Like, I think it's like second at worst really solid overall with just a lot of cheese in terms of the shield breaks in terms of the like up the edge guarding you know up DI traps and stuff like that just a solid character to pick
Speaking of another solid character, one that I think people will actually be mad at me for that putting in high tier, we got Diddy Kong. I am not a 100% Diddy believer. And again, I think the character is like top, what is it, 25-ish, which is still really good. Don't get me wrong, this character is a very, very good character. But I do think the prevalence of enough of the characters that make him struggle make him not broken. It is really difficult for him to consistently do well when some of his worst matchups are some of the most relevant characters right now. Uh, of course, like I know like his actual worst matchups are very niche, like Isabel and Pac-Man and Villager. Those are obviously super rare, but characters like Steve and Sonic doing really well versus Diddy Kong make it so that like, oh, two of the most common characters in the meta are bad for him. That's not good, right? And of course, a lot of the times Diddy Kong is struggling in random defensive plays, right? Of course, like he does have Monkey Flip and he has Banana. His defense is really good. But I don't know. I feel like people just kind of still don't play around Monkey Flip correctly. And again, I'm saying this is like a Smash 4 and Brawl all vet where like I'm just way more used to the move than a lot of character or a lot of people but I don't feel like he has the like win button that a lot of other characters especially in top tier do we're like oh this is just a broken strategy like monkey flip is good don't get me wrong it is a really strong move but it has a lot more counterplay than a lot of other moves that are just kind of broken so yeah Diddy Kong rests here in my opinion has some really good matchups in meta has some not really good matchups in meta well, again if you want to put this character in top tier I'm not gonna argue I'm really not like this character's broken he's so good I do think he has a couple of too many flaws like people aren't grabbing down tilt enough people aren't counterplaying like what he has enough they're like so scared of him uh and then that kind of forces them into shield you know, like they're not like staying near ledge where you can kind of like fall like you're not really gonna get banana confirmed if you're near ledge because you'll just like go onto like the ledge and granted being on the ledge isn't great against diddy but it's better than dying to forward smash at 80 so Next up is a slight demotion of this character. This is the first time I think I've put this character outside of top tier. He's always been like the very, very end of top tier. We're talking about one of the most prolific zoners in the game, Young Link. Young Link is, of course, ridiculous. You have arrow and boomerang and bomb and down tilt and forward air and back air and nair and up and he has a ton of good moves, right? Um, he has a good advantage. He has really good control over the neutral game. Uh, he's not as good of a zoner as characters like Samus or Rob or Steve. Uh, he doesn't really have the timeout threat of, you know, the faster characters like Sonic. He doesn't have the ridiculous combos like a lot of the rushdown characters. So he's kind of good at a lot of things, right? He can tap into his really good buttons and his frame data. He can tap into his projectile war and his zoning and stuff like that. So he is always comfortable in most matchups, at least in a couple of areas. But the biggest problem with him is I don't think he has a good disadvantage and he does not recover or get off the ledge well. So a lot of characters that have better combos than him are going to combo the absolute hell out of him. The characters that are good at edge guarding will edge guard the hell out of him. It's not easy to recover as Young Link, especially if the character is good at both dealing with Uppy and the tether. It's going to be hard for him to get back to stage. And of course, characters that will just juggle him will juggle him forever. What is he going to do? Like bomb and then throw it down and then the opponent can catch it with the up air they're using to to juggle him with like he doesn't have a stall and fall down there where he kind of just like gets back to the ground immediately and gets back to safety or like you know gets hit and then has his resources back he's not that type of character so he has to play a very relatively honest disadvantage he does have like beer reversing arrows and boomerangs but his airspeed isn't high enough for that to be super effective but the character is still of course really strong this is the first time i haven't put him in top tier yeah this game's hard <laughs> i think i bumped up one character from uh this tier to uh top tier and then young Link just came down a little bit but yeah, the character's really good, of course, like ridiculously good, but you might sometimes get hit and die. Does this character suck? Is it all a meme? I don't know, but we're talking about Zero Suit Samus right now. Of course, Zero Suit Samus's results are largely based on is Mars going to stuff and doing well, question mark. So the results are mostly contingent on one player. They're mostly related to one player. There are a couple of other good Zero Suits. Of course, there's several in Japan. I know there's also like Opsign from uh, Canada who's been doing pretty well. I think he's from BC. There are like some Zero Suits here and there doing decently well, but it's mostly Mars. And Mars just had a really good run at SmashCon getting seventh. Mar Zero Suit is like weird because she struggles with a lot of the meta characters. She strolls, in my opinion, with Kazuya and with Fox, even though Mars beat Light, but that's like a rivalry thing, but I still think Fox wins the matchup. But at the same time, like, is maybe Steve's worst matchup? Question mark. At least beats Steve, like 100%. Does well versus characters like Rob and Game & Watch and Sonic? 
Like, you have a lot of good spots for Zero Suit and a lot of bad spots, but of course, a lot of her bad spots can be mitigated with just running away better and playing a more defensive game, or also just like, hey, I got the hit, killed you at 30. Like, I edge guarded the Cloud, I edge guarded the Aegis, even though they're gonna be like out neutraling you most of the time. So, Zero Suit is a very difficult character to play in neutral because you can't just short hop an aerial over and over again because her aerials aren't quite good enough for that. When you're playing well, when this character is in the zone, it is like one of the hard, like, she's one of the hardest characters to hit in the game. She's one of the hardest characters to keep in disadvantage, of course, because you have flip jump and down air. You have, uh, you can't fast fall air dodge, which is actually like a unique flaw of Zero Suit. Literally, she's the only character that can't fast fall air dodge. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this video again in this card. I would appreciate it. She, of course, has the down B spike. She has back air, forward air, side B. She has a lot of good options to randomly get early kills, but again, it's very precise, very difficult, and in a game where people can have like huge swaps in movement or huge hit boxes to kind of protect you, it's a little bit difficult to, you know, consistently just be on timing of a lot of these things. When it works, it looks great. When it doesn't, uh, she can struggle a lot. And of course, that doesn't, that means just like play well. Everyone technically has to play well because if you aren't playing well, you will lose to someone like Major who's the best Ganon. He'll just destroy you, right? Like that's gonna happen. But yeah, Zero Suit sucks asterisk because she used to be top five and now she's top like 27 or something like that. But yeah, the character's still definitely a threat. But you know, mostly just hope you don't run into Mars. I forgot about doorstop. This next character is a universally hated character that is also surprisingly difficult to play, and you won't understand that unless you've played her. We're talking about Min Min. Min Min is, of course, an incredibly polarizing character in terms of her matchups. She destroys probably the most characters in the game, or maybe like top four in terms of like just wins hardcore because just out neutrals you, edge guards you. Bing bang, you're done. No issue. Also, gets destroyed by a lot of characters. You play against Mimin, you hit her, bing bang, you're done. You don't care about the neutral because you're too fast, or you just have a good enough combo game that it does not matter. Disadvantage and advantage are so important. Mimin's advantage? Ridiculous, right? You're gonna hit everyone's landing with a ram ram into Dragon Smash. You're gonna be edge guarding. You're gonna be two framing. You're gonna be edge trapping. This character, when is it, when they're in control, are ridiculous. But when she's in disadvantage, it feels like the other character is totally in control because of the hyper focus on her neutral, you are often making decisions way earlier than your opponents are in terms of like, I have to throw this move out here because if they run in and jump, I have to like ram him and jump here to kind of hit their, you know, approach. Oh, actually they just dashed on the ground. I'm now above them. I have to land and I have to like land on them because they ran under me. And now this is a struggle, right? Like she has to make decisions so early against a lot of characters. And if you're wrong, you're going to be put in a really awkward spot that you have to then kind of overcompensate to either get back to the center or to avoid your opponent and then if you get hit or you're wrong or they or they guess right you're you might die because this character just dies off stage so easily it's hard for me to put her in top tier because she doesn't have like i don't know she doesn't have something ridiculous enough to like make up for that like i'm gonna like say like cloud right like cloud has limits so his bad off stage even though it's like a better recovery than a lot of people give it credit for then you suddenly have a really good recovery because you have better airspeed and like limit climb hazard mimin doesn't have that mimin just gets it off stage and dies against a lot of characters. Even characters with the bad matchups against her can still kind of touch of death her. She just has the tools in neutral to win anyway or to not really get put in that situation. But you still have to play really well as Mimin. This character is hard. Still high tier though. But yeah, that's going to end this tier. Top tier. Let's go. Starting off with probably the most honest top tier, we got Lucina. Lucina is obviously just a character that has a bunch of strengths, has good sword, has good edge guarding, has good out of shield, good juggling, good advantage in general, has a little bit of a worse disadvantage compared to some of the other top tiers we're going to be talking about, but overall, it's fine. Lucina can control the game, has really big swing points, whether it's with edge guarding or just getting a good juggle state, or of course, shield breaker, probably the most unfair thing about Lucina because you're gonna die at 40 if you get hit by a shield breaker and they only really need one or two a set in order to swing it in their favor. I don't think anyone thinks she's not top tier, but I don't really think anyone thinks she's like top five or ten, like breaking the upper, upper, upper echelon of this tier. Uh, so yeah, a solid, a solid nine type character. In terms of results, this might be the biggest drop-off character throughout this entire game, other than nerfed characters, we're talking about 
Pokemon Trainer. Pokemon Trainer obviously has lost some representation uh, and hasn't really gained much of it back. I know that Noe and Doorstop are probably the two Pokemon Trainers that I think of the most other than the Quid who kind of just disappears most of the time because Atelier doesn't play the character, Tweak doesn't play the character, Leffen doesn't play this game. Uh, so a lot of PTs are kind of not here anymore when there was a big PT scene and a lot of people play this character. There are very few of them. I don't even think Ned plays this character anymore, but that doesn't mean the character's not ridiculous. Of course, Squirtle is one of the best rushdown characters in the game. Really good mobility and a great forward tilt, one of the best forward tilts in the game. Good combos, good edge guarding, especially because of Water Gun. And then, of course, you have Ivysaur, the mid range, I'm going to keep you out, zoner type character with a ridiculous up air that kills so early. Good edge guarding, mostly with down air, but also can be with neutral air, although that is SDIable. Then you have Charizard, who, in my opinion, is the most important part of this character because it's a character that will farm rage and then they are one of the best characters in the game with said rage. He's very heavy, good recovery that has super armor so you can't really mess with it. Multiple recoveries with super armor actually. And then you have stuff like forward tilt and back air and back throw back air at 50 that's going to kill if it catches you off guard or just, you know, good platform positioning, uh, good out of shield options with up B and up smash can challenge people doing dumb things because of the armor that this character has. It's just terrifying in my opinion. I think Charizard is the most important piece of the character. Again, maybe that's not necessarily meaning the best because I think Squirtle is very, very strong and very good. And when I lose to Pokemon trainers, it's mostly because of Squirtle. Uh, but yeah, this character just has a bunch of strengths, really, really good stuff, but has a kind of struggle at the ledge as all of the characters, honestly. None of them are really good at getting off the ledge. And so it can be really difficult to maintain like an advantage in terms of like you're winning uh, because you might get hit to the ledge and take a bunch of percent. That's kind of it though. That's really their only flaw. This character is ridiculous otherwise. Put your threes in the air. Wait, it's not a three, it's a W. Wa, wa, wario is next. You know how dumb this character can be. A ridiculous combo game, ridiculous advantage, great edge guarding, an item that controls the pace of the game uh, in terms of bike. You have obviously waft, which is one of the most influential moves in the entire game. He has the ability to just blow anyone up at any point in a game. However, Wario, the reason he's down here, not higher in the list, is because he does struggle with some of the upper, upper echelon characters, uh, mostly being, spoiler alert, Steve, Sonic, and Game & Watch. They are very prevalent in meta right now, and Wario struggles pretty hard with all of them, most notably Sonic. I don't know how Gluto beat Ken, I mean, I do, because I watched that set, but it was ridiculous. Now, of course, there are other top tiers that do well versus character, and even some high tiers, honestly. Characters like Ness do really well versus Wario, because they hitboxes are better and more clean open ups, uh, even if characters aren't getting as much damage off of every hit. Like Wario, again, has to kind of fight you or run away the whole time, but running away, uh, especially with Wario, because he doesn't really have an option to kind of like zoom across the stage like a flip jump or a quick attack or bouncing fish. Like he has bike, but bike puts him really high in the air, so then you can kind of just juggle him anyway. Uh, so the running away is mostly for waft, not for timeout. There is, of course, the age old saying, you play two stock versus Wario. And while that isn't technically true, because sometimes, honestly, you're playing with one stock. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's hard to fight against Wario, knowing that, okay, the timer is ticking until Waft, you either feel like you have to camp and just deal with the entire thing, or you have to be hyper-aggressive, which then allows Wario, who has one of the best backdashes in the game, to just start with punishing you. He has great two-framing, an amazing character, but can get walled out, can get uh, just matchup checked at top level, and that's basically the only reason why he's not higher. This character's been broken all along with no changes, and everyone went right under their giant green nose. We're talking about Yoshi. Yoshi she is absolutely top tier. I know Japan thinks this character is like top five or ten right now, mostly off of the back of Yoshidora and now Ron, who did pretty well at, I forget which tournament it was recently, but he got second. Uh, Yoshi's a crazy good character. Of course, one of the best things about him is his simplicity in terms of, oh, I'm getting comboed, I'm going to mash the jump button, and there is no reason not to mash the jump button because I can go across the stage with the highest air mobility in the game, or like second highest air mobility in the game, or something like that, and just land across the stage. He, of course, has amazing combos. I feel like a lot of people didn't know how amazing the combos that Yoshi had were, including myself. I mean, Yoshidora's optimizations with this character to get just a ton of damage. Absolutely ridiculous damage output on this character. Of course, that can also include the single hit move of down air, which is one of the best aerials in the game and one that if you forget about it, you're going to either die to it because it's super strong. You're going to get comboed into it because you can actually get like falling up air into rising down air, which is kind of crazy, or you're just going to let them get off the ledge and either have your shield poked, shield broken, 
or you're gonna take 30% from it. He doesn't honestly get walled out by a lot of characters. I feel like I know a lot, a lot of people back in the day were like, oh, he loses to every sword character, which he doesn't because his advantage is too strong for that. He has great edge guarding. He has some of the most unique pressure in the game because of egg. He can really jump up higher than basically any character. Like I talk about like, oh, you can read jumps really high with only a small handful of characters like Zero Suit, Falco, Pika, and Pichu, mostly because of Thunder, less so than their jumps. Yoshi's up there. Yoshi is like the other one that you can really just zoom up there and pressure people. It's really uncomfortable to play against Yoshi at all times because he can kill you really easily. Uh, he has just great kill confirms like back air into up smash, back air into forward smash. That's honestly not even a lot of people get. He has a great up smash, great forward smash, crazy jab lock if you hit it. Like forward smash is so strong when it comes to that. He doesn't have like the simple spammable win button. But other than that, like you basically have to win by being a good player. That's kind of it, but he has everything else. We go from the combo breaker to one of the strongest combo characters in the game, Sora. Honestly, this might be an underrating of Sora, because I think this is about 20th. Uh, Sora's ridiculous. We have seen, of course, Kamame or Kameme do really well with this character. The damage output of this character, the kill potential, the everything that this character has is so good. He's a little awkward to play. He's not like other characters. And because of that, he can kind of be difficult to pick up. But when you put the time into this character, he is ridiculous. I've been seeing more and more players that aren't Kamame get really long Nair and Fair strings uh, that just lead to death. I've literally seen zero deaths of just like down tilt, Nair, Nair, Fair, Fair, Nair, Nair, Fair, Fair, Nair, 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 Fair, Fair, Nair, Nair, Forward Smash. It is crazy. This character kills so easily. He edge guards. He has a good counter for recoveries. Obviously, one of the best recoveries in terms of distance in the game. He can edge guard very very uniquely compared to a lot of characters. He has safe aerials when it comes to back air and up air. He's just a good character. He has basically everything. He has a little floaty, so some characters can advantage him harder, uh, but he's just really good. He also doesn't have a ton of bad matchups. I know that Kamame thinks I think the worst matchup he has is Fox, but so he just kind of is able to win against every character, and because of that, he's just a great tournament character. Again, assuming you're hitting all your stuff. If you're not hitting all your stuff, this character is a lot worse, but I feel like there is definitely a middle ground of fish for every zero to death you can possibly get and also just like play good at the game and Kameme does that really really well. I know Ferps is mostly playing Sora at this point dropping Kazuya. There are obviously other Soras that come to mind but it's mostly gonna be Kameme because he's ridiculous and this character is so good. We go from the Keyblade to the key to me starting playing Smash in the first place. We're going with Samus. This character's dumb. This character's so good. She is obviously top tier. She has a bajillion strengths. She has probably the strongest or second strongest neutral in the entire game, maybe third behind like Steve and Sonic. Her neutral is ridiculous. Her damage output is ridiculous. The ability for her to kill is ridiculous. She has the best ledge trapping in the game, a pretty good disadvantage. Like it is exploitable, but bomb is so fluid that a lot of times if you get hit for bombing, it's because the opponent is either just outplaying you or you bombed at a bad spot. This character's recovery is really good. The character's edge guarding is really good. The juggle game is ridiculous. The advantage of this character is crazy. Literally, the only negative that Samus has is if characters do well versus zoners, she can struggle, right? Like, she's going to struggle with Hero. You know, she has a hugely bad matchup versus Olimar uh, and Falco. Like, characters that have reflectors can do very well versus her. But at the same time, she still does well into those matchups because her buttons are still really good. Samus can basically win at any point in any match all the time. She is so strong. She's one of the most popular characters now, so popular, so good, just a ridiculously strong character in all aspects. Sometimes you will get just like advantage stated to death by the very, very elite advantage characters like Aegis and Game & Watch and Sonic. But at the same time, you can do it right back to people. You can be losing 150% to zero and get one like down throw near someone at the ledge or just back throw them at 20 and they might die. It's happened to so many players so many times ridiculously strong character, so good. We're going with Mario. Of course, Kurama has been doing amazingly well recently. You still have Dark Wizzy, who had a strong showing at Super Smash Con. You have a couple of Marios in Japan. The main one I think of from Japan is Snow. You also have other, you know, Marios that are always threats, right? You have Stroder when he decides to play Mario. You have Ludo, who's very strong. There are so many good Mario players, and this character is just solid overall. He hits you and does a ton of damage. He has some of the highest air mobility in the game. 
game. He has, of course, his crazy ladder combos off of the top. He has up air, down air. He has upper, upper, up He has a great two frame when it comes to dash attack. He has good out of shield, arguably some of the best out of shield in the game with up B out of shield and up smash. And of course he has a kill throw and his combo throws are crazy. His frame data is so safe and so fast. He can control the game at all points, but of course he does have flaws in terms of the fact that if he is dealing with a character that can solidly keep him out the entire time, it can be pretty difficult. Mario does lose to Min Min. I think the hardest matchup for Mario is Shulk because Shulk can keep him out and then also break the combos. If you have something to break combos at frame one, like Luigi or Yoshi or the Shotos, it can kind of be a little bit more difficult to get your combos. I mean, that is why you saw Kurama at SmashCon struggle a little bit with Peanuts, Little Mac, and Geist's Bayonetta. Those are the two, like, oh, they have frame one escape options. It can be very scary for that. So, because of that, Mario isn't higher, but this character's dumb. Like, no bias of me hating Mario. Like, this character's just so good. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised I'm putting him as low as I am, because this character is, like, more meta-relevant than he's been in quite some time, but he's terrifying. But he's just, I feel like, not as good as some other characters above him. And we're going to another early game threat who is still maintaining relevance in Wolf. The thing about Wolf is a lot of the characters I've spoken about have their game plans, right? Sora, you want to nair, you want to shoot charge shot, you want to get crazy combos with Mario. Wolf is one of the only characters in top tier that does not have their own game plan. Wolf needs to adapt to every single matchup that he plays. Of course, are there clumps of matchups that you play the same? Absolutely. But Wolf does not have one standard game plan, which makes him so difficult to play in tournament. When he's on and he's playing super well, he looks fantastic. I have got my ass beat by wolf players harder than most other people because when they're on and they know exactly how you're playing, they will destroy you because wolf has all the tools to combat literally everything in the game. But the onus of winning the game is always put on to the wolf player, which is why you will see wolf players complain about like my character so hard, my character's not actually that good. Of course the character is good, they have all the tools to win, but it is incredibly difficult to constantly be on top of every single matchup in a game with 80 bajillion characters and most of them are relevant and most of them are good enough that if you're not ready for a matchup, you might just lose. Of course, he does have a slightly exploitable offstage game, although it's very much like not actually that big of a deal. He has a frame two air dodge, which is kind of ridiculous for a character with his mobility in the air and his weight. I'm surprised that a character that has this, that is as heavy as him has a frame two air dodge. I think he's the heaviest character with a frame two air dodge. But yeah, Wolf is a ridiculously strong character, but he is one of the hardest characters to play. This next character is hard to play just like Wolf, but actually for a different reason, we're talking about Cloud. Cloud, obviously I see hard to play. Esam, Cloud, you just back air and throw there and he's so simple. I get it, like I understand. Cloud has very, very good moves. Obviously he has the second best results in the world because the second best player in the world, Spargo, plays them. Cloud is ridiculous. He has so many strengths. Back air is dumb. His advantage is dumb. Forward air is dumb. Limit is dumb. He can get you on the ledge and terrify you. He can edge guard you. He has decent out of shield options. I say decent because uh, up the out of shield, people are getting better at DIing out of it and actually punishing Cloud for it. Like frame data wise, it's a good out of shield option, but it's starting to get worse in terms of actually hitting people. But the reason I say that he is difficult is because he is the first character we've talked about in top tier that has kind of a bad recovery. Of course, is it actually a bad recovery? No, it's not Dr. Mario Ganon level recovery, right? But he has the second worst recovery, in my opinion, on all of top tier, which means that as meta relevant as he is, he is always exploitable uh, if you aren't recovering perfectly or if you use your double jump slightly early. So as Cloud, you have to be paying attention to your resources in a very different way than a lot of the characters in this top tier. Cloud kind of is like, man, if I don't have my double jump and I don't have limit, I straight up die. Uh, and if you have limit and no double jump, you're probably fine. And then if if you have your double jump and don't have limit, you still might die because someone can still just kind of hit you correctly. And that's scary. Of course, does that matter a lot of times? No, but also that's because in my opinion, people are bad at edge guarding. Still in 2023, people still don't edge guard correctly because they don't want to give up stage position because they're cowards and you should kill the character that is exploitable off stage. But that's enough of my rant about that. He's ridiculous. He's obviously super strong, but he is exploitable, more exploitable than people pretend that he is. But that doesn't mean he's not broken. He's broken. Speaking of broken, we're going to go to one character that a lot of people want, banned, Kazuya Mishima. I still don't think Kazuya is quite a top 10 character. I think people are getting better at their vertical advantage states and edge trapping in general, but Ka Ka it's Kazuya. He's going to electric you and you're gonna die. If you jump at him, you're gonna die. If you stay on the ground, you might die because you're gonna get grabbed. If you are on the ledge, you might die. It, like Kazuya has like the most obvious win conditions of anyone in the entire game because he, he can, sp if you are just good at doing electric and doing combos, you can probably be like top 
500 or 700 in the world just with only that. Of course, when you add in good player knows how to use the crouch dashing and movement and is actually good at the game, Kazuya becomes fucking terrifying. Legitimately one of the scariest characters in the game, he has anti-zoning because of his reflector, in terms of like projectile camping. Um, characters that can wall him out are obviously scary, but two command dashes into an electric, suddenly they're in your face, you got hit, you're gonna get first teched on the platform, and you're going to explode. He has the most obvious zero to deaths in the game, he has the most consistent zero to deaths in the game. He, of course, one of the benefits of him, and the only other, I feel like two, the other two characters that I've talked about so far that have this advantage are Samus and Yoshi. They're pretty heavy, which means that they can kind of have longer uh, stocks in this game, and of course getting one extra opportunity to hit your opponent can sometimes be the game. Kazi is like one of the heaviest characters in the game, by far the heaviest in top tier, which means that he's gonna be living longer than every other good character by like a lot. Of course, that he has Rage Drive, which I don't know why he has that at this point. He has just ridiculously strong killing moves in general, so regardless of what goes on, you're gonna die to this character. He does have some struggle matchups, of course, and you can, uh, you know, definitely abuse some of the Kazi a player's disadvantage habits like fastball air dodging or going for too many down or up airs and he doesn't have like a ton of options but this character's dumb as hell he's so good and i think this is the one in top tier people are gonna get the most mad at me for we got me brawler above kazuya and cloud if you want to disagree with me fine i understand this character is so up. He is so insanely messed up. He has an amazing neutral game. If you want, he has a command grab. If you otherwise want, he has an aerial dash attack. He has some of the dumbest combos in the game. Not quite as dumb as Kazuya's, but probably a top four or five combo game in the entire game. A lot of cheese when it comes to down throw into up B, regardless of if you're using Thrupper or Heli Kick. He is good on every stage because you can swap from Thrupper to Heli Kick depending on stage. So like on Town and City, you run Heli Kick. On Battlefield, you can run Heli Kick. On PS2 and Small Battlefield, you're running Thrupper. He is just good on every stage. He doesn't have that many bad matchups. Like sure, maybe some of their matchups are slightly not comfortable, but he's always the more BS character in all of his hard matchups, which is crazy to say. Like I would definitely think at this point, the hardest matchups for me Brawler are Roy and Aegis, but Aegis has an exploitable recovery and Roy, even though he blows you up, me Brawler blows him up harder. He he does so much damage, he has a ridiculous advantage state, he has great out of shield between whatever up B you're using, suplex, nair out of shield, or just whatever, it, like he's so stupid. The reason that this character is not considered higher by most people is because there is not a solo main super top player playing them. That's it. I know he's becoming very popular as a counter pick in Japan as well, mostly for Game & Watch, which is hilarious to me. Kamame started to play Mii Brawler, as well as Hikaru started to play Mii Brawler, although I think he quit to play Street Fighter 6. I just made a video on one of Europe's best me brawlers, if not Europe's best me brawler in terms of kid. This character is just so not okay. He has tools for every single matchup, for every single situation. If you wanna switch up your moves, obviously do that. Just run flip jump. He has really good ledge trapping. He has a great dash attack, just good burst options in general. Like, I don't know what the flaw of this character is to make him not absolutely broken. Speaking of meta-relevant and absurd, we're talking about Peach. Peach has some crazy combos. This character does not need to short hop, so she almost in the entire game can play a ground game with ground float stuff. That is very unlike most of the cast. She of course has full hop float to cancel a float into jump grab. You have to react to so many unique things when it comes to Peach. She has ridiculous combos, a great up air for advantage state. She has of course an item, like an item pull, which are all broken. The main flaw of this character is she's sometimes susceptible to, I'm just gonna throw out my big hitbox and hope you run into it because you probably can't punish in any way because nothing in Ultimate actually has landing lag. So Peach randomly does struggle with some random characters like King DDD, Villager, Isabel. Characters like Young Link can give her trouble. Characters like Mega Man. Characters like Rosa. There's a lot of awkward matchups for Peach, but she's the character that's like, oh, I'm losing time. Oh, you're actually took 95%. Goodbye. GG's. Her out of shield is crazy because she can footstool out of shield into turn up stuff. There's so much optimization for this character that makes her absolutely broken. Of course, is it feasible to do all of it consistently? Not really, especially not in a tournament setting, but we've seen a lot of top Peach players still do very well with this stuff. Umeki is doing better than he probably ever has. Mute 
base is the highest ranked he's ever been. Oh, what's that Peach player's name from the Netherlands that now lives in Japan? If you find a fire, you can just like text up here and I'll, I'll look like an idiot, it's fine. Of course, if she doesn't have float or you're able to just like shark her even while having float, sometimes her disadvantage is kind of bad because she's so floating and she doesn't have a good fastball air dodge or descending aerials. That can kind of be a struggle. You can kind of blow her up for a good amount of percent, but if she doesn't get put in that position because her neutral is too solid and or she just ledge traps you for a billion percent, it's gonna be a struggle for like to fight against this character. Peach is insanely good. We're getting close to our top 10. And unfortunately, outside of top 10, we're talking about Snake. I do think that Snake is somehow getting like more popular in meta, but also worse. And I don't understand why he's getting more popular. But at the same time, he has a very exploitable disadvantage. He has like one of the most exploitable disadvantages of any character in this tier, because he's constantly forcing himself not to go to ledge, because if you have to go low as Snake, you can just get spiked out of his up B. And if you go high, then basically all you're doing is kind of reversing stuff or like be reversing and being weird in terms of that, in terms of mix-ups, but a lot of characters in this meta are getting really, really good at hitting you all the time when you're in disadvantage, and yes, he has grenade, but people are even getting good at that, just like hitting his feet. I think Snake has way more losing matchups than most people in this tier. Snake feeds off of players messing up, or players getting antsy, or just messing up a couple of times. I mean, hell, it happened to me. I lost to a snake at SmashCon in Kronos because weird interactions happened that I wasn't ready for, and I got flustered, which is why I feel like he's still very meta-relevant, even though, in my opinion, as a character, he's getting worse. But yeah, I mean, still one of the best turtling characters in the game, of course. Great killing with up tilt and forward tilt and back air and forward air and uh, forward tilt and uh, down smash and Nikita and up smash and c4 like an up air and he has a lot of ways to kill you right he'll kill you he'll kill you good but also i feel like just a lot of people are getting better at killing him but then you have dio get top two at delta number five you've had great showings from snake mains in the u.s of course between apollo kage and mvd and chronos there's a lot of snake players to go around basically everywhere Alan Dis has also been doing very well in Mexico, getting some good wins on players like Mudes. So Snake is doing really well in meta, even though I think he is the worst he's ever been in terms of a character. So maybe my opinions are wrong. Maybe this whole thing is futile and ESAM opinions are real and I don't know what I'm talking about. Psych. Of course I know what I'm talking about because I'm bald. So I think I lied and people are actually going to get the most mad at me for this one, not even me, Brawler. But outside of top 10, Going from like top four in my lists to top 11 or 12, we have Joker. So no, this isn't because Leo's not playing the character anymore, because believe it or not, I don't view my tier lists from results. The reason that I think Joker isn't as good as I used to is because much like Wolf, he's a character that doesn't have an, uh, his own singular game plan that he can just do in every matchup. You have to play against your opponent. You don't play your game, which is inherently going to make your characters way harder and way more susceptible to randomness and just strong spammable stuff that a a lot of the other top tiers have, which makes it very, very difficult. Is he without strength? No, he has a really good combo game. His mobility is ridiculous. He has two really good projectiles in terms of gun and his side B. He has Rebel's Guard. He has Arsene, of course. So he has some of the strongest comeback factors in the entire game. Like Joker doesn't actually have a flaw because especially his add a shield game is pretty good when you factor in footstool gun add a shield, which is ridiculous. But the main flaw of him is just the fact that he has to play around a lot of what other characters want to do. And in a game where you have electric thrown out at you, you have Cloud Backers, you have Game & Watch Nair, you have Spin Dash, you have Fox Dash Tack, like there are so many things that so many characters are just like trying to just like mash their win condition, and Joker's win condition is live long enough to get Arsene and then outplay you. The one thing that has been influenced by results is I really don't see the Joker players actually benefit off of Arsene, because people are either keeping them in advantage for too long and Joker isn't able to get any meaningful hit with enough time on Arsene, or people are getting better at playing defensive, so when Joker has Arsene, he's not able to get that opening because people are playing so well defensively around him. Those two combinations make it so that Arsene is a, is a less potent factor, which means that he is more so going to be in base Joker, which means that he's not as good of a character. Still ridiculous, I mean, again, top 11 or 12, but not top 4 like I used to think. And much like Joker, this next one is also a demotion, but I think people will be less mad at it because they thought that I was crazy for having him as high as he was. We're talking about 
Roy outside the top 10. I still think Roy's honestly ridiculous. I think he can spam a lot of sour spots and not really worry about all of the things that all the Roy players complain about. If he's going to play in a way that is like mashing sour spots and not really worrying about getting the sweet spots, of course, he will have his opponents be alive longer. They'll be able to hit things. They'll be able to get their advantage state going. And even though he does have a great B reverse and disadvantage, he is still more exploitable than some of the other characters. Because his recovery is a little bit more exploitable than other top tiers. Like again, I would say he's probably the third worst recovery in all of top tier behind Cloud and Aegis. That means something, right? Because some characters will just be able to kill him. He still has a decent amount of at least minus one matchups. I don't think Roy has a minus two. If it is, it's probably Pichu, who's not relevant because Pichu actually does better against Roy than Pikachu does. I know Aegis is actually pretty rough for them as well. Uh, but so Roy loses some matchups, right? Probably like six to eight matchups. Of course, he is really explosive. He has crazy advantage state. He has one of the best up airs in the game. He has one of the best kill confirms in the game in general, in terms of just jab into whatever, right? Jab back air, jab forward air, jab up air. He has great ledge trapping. He has, of course, uh, great tech chasing. If you hit a down tilt and someone's not DIing up, uh, they'll get side beat or forward smashed or whatever. I feel like people DIing up on the moves that you can tech have actually like been a pretty big deal in terms of making him worse, in my opinion. You know, like getting hit by random things that are going to put you into tumble and like near the floor if you DI up, probably not going to happen as much, especially if you're not a fast faller. And surprisingly, there aren't that many fast fallers in the top tier. There's only like four. So a lot of the meta relevant characters aren't fast fallers, which means they will more than likely be able to DI out of down tilt into tech chase, which is going to kind of let people live a lot longer. Of course, it's not going to actually be a long time because he has jab to side B or side B or jab to back air or forward tilt or any edge guard or his neutral B edge trap two frame, whatever move. He has a great advantage in all aspects, right? But neutral can can sometimes be difficult for characters that have better just mashing game plans than him, and some characters have better advantages than him. Again, is he bad? No, he's top 11. If you want to put him in top 10, I agree. I actually had him in my top 10 uh, in my literal list that I have that I'm referencing, and I just moved it around in my head, which is one of the advantages of the fact that I've recorded this tier list over a month is I got to think about it more. But yeah, Roy, right outside of the top 10, and we are going to go into the top 10, not splitting it up into another video, baby. Let's go Shulk. He's broken. I don't care that his results are probably the worst they've ever been. This character is ridiculous. I, he cheats. He's a cheater character. He's one of the biggest cheater characters in the entire game. He has one of the best moves in Smash history in terms of Monado, a combo breaker, and a move that's minus two without any arts, and great edge guarding, and great ledge trapping, and the ability to disengage all the time, the ability to engage whenever he wants. He is such a stupid character. Theoretically, of course, Shulk is like one of the super best characters in the game, like top four, three, five, something like that. I can't put him worse than top 10 even if I'm going off of results, or like even if I'm factoring results in more than I used to, because he's just so good. He has wave dashing that cancels into invincibility with Monado art, uh, you know, like, uh, what is it called? Dial storage. He just has so much tech. Of course, is he difficult? Yeah. Is he hard to pick up? Yeah, absolutely. I was picking him up and I gave up, mostly because that was the era of like Wi-Fi when it was like 2020, and I was like, I can't do that. That's too difficult. This character's fucked up. He's so stupid. He, like, has amazing matchup spread, right? He loses to, like, four characters at most. Like, anytime you think of, like, oh, man, this character just does so well, except they have these random losing matchups. Shulk is almost always on that list, if you include characters like Steve or Game & Watch. Like, all of, like, so many meta-relevant characters struggle with Shulk. The only three characters I can really think of that actively beat Shulk are Pikachu, Palutena, and Snake. Also, he's super cheesy because a smash art, like, forward air runoff at, like, 50 and you're dead. Um, yeah, dumb, dumb as hell, super dumb, super stupid, crazy character. Miss Consistency, of course, is gonna be in top 10, and who is that? It's Palutena. Palutena is strong. Of course, she almost falls into the archetype that I've been talking about in top tier that makes the worst characters like Joker and Wolf being like, yeah, she doesn't really have a game plan, but she does because her game plan is either run up in Nair for a character that can't deal with it or back up and fair and use her mobility. She has ridiculous mobility, one of the best advantage states in the game, consistent combos, consistent edge traps, one of the best two framing moves in the game, even if you can DI away from it and then you don't actually get back aired at high percents. She just keeps you at the ledge forever. Also, I don't know why the Palutena's don't go for up smash two frames more. I feel like my character, Pikachu, is the only one that they ever try to up smash two frame when that shit lingers five ever and kills really early. 
Who cares if it's committal? You're just gonna warp to center stage anyway. Speaking of warp, her warp is so good. Her up B, of course, it can ledge cancel and it's probably the best ledge cancel in the game. The biggest deal, in my opinion, is Palutena is the character that benefits from the horizontal up B, no two frame type thing. I need to actually make another video about that. If you ever notice that all the Palutenas recover from like exactly stage length and then just grab the ledge and no one two frames her, it's because she doesn't have a two frame. It's so stupid. So in order to actually edge guard her, you have to commit earlier to jump out stage, jump off stage and hit her and then she just up these high keeps a ton of air momentum like her disadvantage for like the character that she seems like she's supposed to be is ridiculously good she has one of the best disadvantages in the entire game she has two invincible moves like dash attack and back air uh, she just has answers for everything she's one of the characters that gives wario a hard time because she just kind of runs up and does back air or runs up and does neutral air. But yeah, I still think she's ridiculous. She's so good, she's so strong, she has everything you need in a character. She just doesn't have a lot of BS. Like, she's not going to absolutely cheese you, she's just going to be really good at low percents and then be not as good at high percents, but at the same time, she has back air, so whatever. The results of this character are, of course, really good. Honestly, in the US, they're getting better because you have Louie Money, you have Chase, you have Huampi, who just, again, that's a Central Florida local, but they're just ridiculously good. Oh no, yeah, then Raflo, who's been doing like crazy in Europe recently, he's been doing so well, his run at Terra was impressive, um, but there are a lot of Palutena players. There's a lot of good stuff about this character. She's incredibly solid, very good character overall. I am so glad that more people don't play this character because this is probably the most underrated and like not played character in the game. Thank God, Pac-Man. I hate this guy. He is so good at being aggressive. His buttons are amazing. He has the best grab in the game in terms of the actual grab because it beats spot dodges. He gets combos off of it. He has a kill throw. He is, he is of course, people will be like, oh, well, like, Hydrant is just like bad blocks. But yeah, he has Hydrant, which slows down the game. And if you're a character that doesn't have a good way to deal with Hydrant, you straight up lose the matchup. If you don't have a good item catch or good item combos, you're screwed. If you don't have good out of shield options to beat his landing back air or his landing forward air, this character is terrifying. He has some ridiculous damage output. He is very much so a character that has a game plan and will stick to it because he will throw down a hydrant and run behind it and charge his bonus fruit and then throw the bonus fruit and then it did it hit no cool i'm gonna run across the stage because you probably had to jump to avoid the fruit into throw hydrant down into run off and charge bonus fruit and maybe hit hydrant maybe you don't know and if you're wrong you're gonna take like 40 and then charge his bonus fruit and then throw the bonus fruit and it's a very cookie cutter game plan that is so strong and difficult for so many characters to deal with and you would think oh man that means pac-man probably struggles with reflector characters no Pac-Man goes even with Game & Watch, who is the best reflector character in the game. Uh, you know, maybe struggles with Fox, but that's because Fox is a rushdown character more than the fact that he has a reflector. So, just has a really good just matchup spread in general, I think, maybe loses to Cloud as well. But again, with a character as good of edge guarding as him and as many setups as him, it's hard to say a character that kind of struggles in disadvantage and offstage can really destroy you that hard. Like, this character's dumb. I don't care. Rocky's been doing better in the United States. T is, of course, a top player, although I haven't, I don't know the last tournament he's been to. I feel like I haven't seen him in a while. There are just Pac-Man players everywhere, but like not actually a ton of Pac-Man players. Thankfully, I hate this character. He's broken. He is such a good character, and if you don't think so, you either haven't played a good Pac-Man or you just, I don't know. This character's broken. I don't know why people don't think this character's like absolutely absurd. But it makes sense if you don't think this next character is absolutely absurd because you have been bought into the propaganda. And also realistically, there's like one good one. Uh, we're going with Fox. Of course, Light, the premier Fox, one of the best players in the world, ridiculous. Then you have Kaninabe in Japan, as well as Paseriman in Japan. Both of them are incredibly strong. I don't think there are any Fox players in Europe that I can think of off the top of my head, and I don't know any from Mexico, but I'm sure there are like some other like random good Fox players. You have like Comet and stuff from, I think he's Wisconsin. Fox is a very strong character has one of the best neutrals in the game uh, just because he's really fast, right? Speed is obviously super important when it comes to getting in in this game, and he does that amazingly well. He has a great dash attack. He has the best empty jump in the game. He has the best short hop in the game in general. Uh, his damage output's ridiculous. His tech chasing's ridiculous because he's really fast and also has like up airs for platform stuff. He has great kill confirms. He has the second best ledge trapping in the entire game, in my opinion, under Samus. Character's dumb. He does so much damage. The only negative of this character is if you have to recover low, 
and your opponent has a spike, sometimes you're gonna die. But again, most of the times, you don't have to go there. The only way that people can cover that side B at the ledge, kind of the one I talked about with Palutena having that very good recovery, is to run off stage and hit him or have an incredibly large down tilt that hits before his two frame, which is very far off there. Or you have to run off stage and hit it. But if you run off stage and try to hit it, and then he side beat a little high or up beat high, you are no longer covering his recovery. And also, realistically, Fox should just be DIing every everything up and in to go as high as possible and then just side be high and deal with shine mix-ups or fast fall air dodge mix-ups or fast fall in the air. It is so hard to keep Fox in the air because he's the fastest falling character in the game, which means that it's really hard to keep him in a lower 45 type position. If you don't know what that is, I'm talking about advantage state. I made a video on that recently. You can check it up in the card up above. It is really hard to keep him in solid disadvantage positions. You kind of just have to swing or hope that you parry something or hope you have really, really good out of shield options. Like I don't actually know what matchups Fox legitimately really struggles with. We've seen top Fox players do well versus the Game & Watches. We've seen the Fox players do well versus the Picos. We've seen the Fox players do well versus Steve. Who else does he lose to? Shulk, probably. They probably lose to Shulk, but I, or like Luigi, again, is a hard matchup. I wish that I saw Light versus Lugi uh, when Light went to Terra. That would have been awesome. And like the Shoto players, yeah, can do decently well, but again, Fox is so mobile that you can just then kind of run away with him and shoot lasers in space with back airs, and he's still a really good character if that's the case. Character's dumb. He's so good. He is squishy. He is light. He will get untackable a bit earlier than some other characters, but he's just, he has all the tools to win all the time, all the time, all the time forever. But he's not top five like the ultimate tier list thing said he was, or like the, the official tier list. He's not top five. He's what, seventh? Oh, it's fine. Speaking of fast and squishy, we're talking about Pyramithra. And again, I'm talking about squishy in terms of like the League of Legends term squishy, nothing else, don't worry about it. Pyramithra, obviously ridiculous. Mithra has some of the best neutral in the game. She is ridiculously fast. They are a sword character, so they have really strong advantages, can wall people out, has just really good at covering people's air dodges and covering people ledge options, and just is really, really good in general. Mithra, of course, by far better than Pyra, and we've seen the Pyra optimizations from an Aegis player like Shutone, who's able to just mash every aerial and somehow still be safe with perfect drift all the time, and suddenly he throws out seven moves and you got hit by one of them, and that one of them was back air that killed you at 90 because you wanted to approach after the sixth move, and it didn't work. Of course, the biggest issue with Aegis is they have one of the most susceptible disadvantages in the entire game, probably like a bottom eight or so disadvantage in the entire game, mostly in referring to offstage. On stage, you're fine. You're just gonna like fast fall Nair as Mithra and then at worst get like shield grabbed and back thrown or something like that, but you're not gonna die getting jolt. You know what I'm saying? But because of their exploitable recovery, they can get edge guarded quite efficiently. Even characters that aren't good at edge guarding can edge guard this character because if they don't have a double jump, they're probably dead. Like they're 99% dead because every single time Mithra's side B is hittable, Pyra's up B does not actually have a hitbox that really goes above the ledge, so you can two frame it or grab the ledge and hit her on the drop off if they're going with Pyra to recover. If they have to go low enough that Mithra has to do that second shot of her up B, all of that won't grab the ledge, so you can just hit her for it, and then probably they don't have a double jump for the next recovery and die. Because of this, a lot of the Aegis players hold in with DI or air dodge directionally in or just panic jump to try to get as high as they possibly can, and all of those things mean that if they get hit one more time, they're probably going to die. We have seen Aegis players time and time again. Again, not particular shots at any of them, but all of them still panic in the ways that you kind of have to, because if you don't panic, you're just gonna get hit and die because the character's edge guarding is, or sorry, the character's off stage game is very susceptible. So Aegis, broken when they're working, really bad when the opponent's character gets a hit. So because of that, not top five, top six. And a character that I never really put as top five, uh, and then I started watching Zomba in his ascension, uh, Rob is top five. This character's silly. Yes, does he have losing matchups with Game & Watch and Palutena and a billion other characters that he technically loses the matchup to? Yes, but Rob is one of also the biggest cheater characters in Ultimate. He has zero to deaths. He has just strong advantage even if you're not getting gyro combos. He has the best ground normal or the second best ground normal in the game in terms of his down tilt. He has the ability to string people off stage. He has tech chase situations. He has great edge guarding. He has great edge trapping. He has an item which, as we talked about, is always going to be broken. He has one of the 
best up airs in the game in terms of forcing people into 50-50s. His up tilt is amazing. His advantage in general is so strong. He has an amazing recovery, so he can either go off stage really far for edge guards or go off stage because he got hit and basically always recover. It's very, very hard to edge guard Rob. Very few characters can do it effectively, and most of them either have a ridiculously super top tier edge guarding game like Pika, Sonic, Meta Knight, or just like spikes that'll kill you that they're just hoping they hit your two frame, right? Yeah, this character is really dumb. I was always like, yeah, Rob like is ridiculous, but only really if they hit their zero to deaths, and I don't see any doing their zero to deaths, so like not top 10, just play the matchup right. And then I see Zomba beating Aegis players by strictly just outplaying them and getting like really clutch edge guards because he's been doing that recently, like since he went to Japan. And it's so impressive and I feel like he shows off the strengths of Rob as a character without Rob as the gimmick, but then also technically Rob has the gimmick. Such a good character. There are a lot of Robs doing pretty good. Of course, Zomba is the main one. Zachary, if you wanted to play Rob, would be very good, even though he plays Pit now. Then of course you have Luma in the United States. You have Atomic, who's been doing well. You have Grayson, who of course is just really strong from Texas. I don't know the European Robs, if there are any. We have, I guess, I think Sintro. Lucrecio is there, but I don't know how often he plays. And then of course, from Mexico, you have uh, Big Boss, who's been doing really well recently. Like Big Boss, before Zomba went to Japan, I was like, oh shit, is Big Boss the best Rob now? And then Zomba went, and actually, I'm gonna money match you a battle of BC and then absorb all your power like the Space Jam ball, and then he became a top five player in the world. Zamba is so good and barely cheeses people. He actually just beats people with Rob's broken tools that aren't gyro combos. So yeah, really good character, really good player in Zamba. It's been nice to see just like someone abuse their character in that way. It's fantastic. And I know I said, and I'm showing that there's a top 10, but in my opinion, the break actually starts here. Because realistically, these top 10 characters are more in line with these four characters, that, or sorry, that tier of characters, than with the top Four. In my opinion, the top four are the best of the best characters, and you noticed a character get a lot higher in this tier list compared to my last one? Sonic the Hedgehog. So I was a Sonic doubter for a very long time, until literally like two months ago, I've been a Sonic doubter. Again, like somewhere in top tier, maybe around like where Kazuya and Me Brawler are on this list. And then I saw Sonic's play against Spargo at whichever one he won, and that Spargo didn't, so I think that was Gommel. The way that he plays this character without spin is ridiculous. And because he can play that well without spin around so many characters, it makes spin even better. This character's advantage state is ridiculous and it's getting pushed all the time. He has an amazing up air, of course, spin stuff does so much damage for some reason. He has some of the best edge guarding in the game. He has a great back here. He has one of the best two framing moves in the entire game. When it comes to his forward smash, he is of course great with punishing with dash back side B or dash back into dash attack the other way or whatever. Of course, he's super fast. He is the character that can best play for timeouts. And even if he's not actually getting timeouts, he like the threat of the timeout forces people to approach. And then if he's right, he'll deal them 40 and keep them on the ledge where then he can do like weak nair into forward smash or weak nair into back air or strong nair into back air, or strong nair into up air, or strong nair into strong nair. There are so many combos with this character to get really early kills, and yeah, I do think some people still like aren't doing the SDI down on spin charge thing, and they're not able to, like they're not DIing spin charge correctly, so they're dying at like 40 to spin charge into forward air when they should just be DIing in and take the up air or whatever else Sonic's gonna do. But he's so good in every aspect, and yeah, while he technically does have some flaws, I guess, uh, he has a frame two air dodge, which is ridiculous, as I kind of talked about with Wolf, and a character that is that fast and unforgiving when he hits you. It's crazy that he has tied for the best air dodge in the game. And also like the animation of his air dodge, I think is like the best in the game when it comes to getting out of combos because he like very much so goes in the Z axis and is pretty thin. So it's really hard to combo him and do as much damage to him as he's doing to you. And then he'll just time you out the whole time. Yeah, character's really dumb. So good, ridiculously good has been obviously a lot more prevalent in meta because Sonics has been doing amazingly, Wrath is back, sonido has been doing well, I think he did well at like Riptide or something, of course you have Ken in Japan, you have Taike in Japan, but there's just so many good Sonic players, it's a very relevant character, terrifying, he's a terrifying character, he hits so hard, he shouldn't hit so hard for being that mobile, but he does, because welcome to Smash Ultimate. Speaking of hitting really hard when they shouldn't, uh, this character used to be a joke and was pretty bad in every Smash game up until this one, and now he is broken with the addition of of another super top player into their fold. We're talking about Mr. Game & Watch. This character has the best advantage in the game. He has the best advantage state in the entire game. Maybe second, up air and nair and up B in tandem make him have the best advantage state in the game 
vertically. He also has one of the best advantage states horizontally, even though he's not necessarily going to true combo you to death, he will chef you at the ledge, and chef legitimately shuts down 60% of the cast at ledge. Up air shuts down 60% of the cast, some of that not overlapping in the air. He has ridiculously good killing because he has forward air, which is one of the hardest aerials in the game to mess with. He has forward tilt, which can combo off of chef. He has back air, which can combo off of chef. He beats big characters. He beats characters that don't have good at like good frame data on shield because he has the best out of shield in the game. He does so much damage. He is he's becoming a lot more popular in meta. Of course, Mia is top three in the world. You have Meister, who's still obviously like top 10 or 15 in the world, somewhere around that range. Game & Watch is like Rob, where it's like, oh, Rob has all these, Rob loses 22 matchups. Game & Watch loses I mean, his like parentheses are like 10 matchups or eight matchups. But at the same time, most of those are sword characters with bad disadvantages, right? Like Lucina and Ike. But then he hits them once and deals them 80% without interacting with them because he can just up air them over and over again. And if they air dodge the up air, he just neutral airs you and then up airs you over and over again until you air dodge and then he up airs you or nares you until he up airs you and then he does that over and over again. And then they air dodge this time. And now you're getting down smashed and you're gonna, because you're like off the platform because you don't want to get, you know, ground pounded down smash, you just get hit by the down smash itself and die at 80. Does he lose to Cloud and Aegis? Probably, yeah. But like, that's just gonna be Spargo. You lose to Spargo. Everyone loses to Spargo. Even people that beat Cloud lose to Spargo. It's Spargo. You're not gonna lose to the other ones if you're a really, really, really good Game Watch player. He has some, he has like the most best of the game moves in the game, but he has like six. He has like the best up the best neutral air, the best up air, the best down smash, maybe the best up smash. That one's like pretty close. He has like, and then he has like one of the best neutral bees in the game. Neutral B is like Steve and Shulk are better, but like he has like a top five neutral B. He just has good everything. It's so, he's, Jesus, he has so much and he's never got buffed. People just didn't realize. I'm sorry. The one person I will give absolute shout outs to this is Snorly from South Florida. Back at Frostbite 2019, he was like, yo, Game Watch is top 10 when everyone thought Game Watch was bad. And he was like, dude, Game Watch is fucking absurd. He's broken. How do you not see it? And I was like, well, like I'm biased because like Pikachu loses to him, but like he's fine. He's not fine. Game Watch was never fine. And we were all fools for thinking it. Speaking of being a fool for thinking it, uh, Pikachu's busted. He's top two still. Yeah, is he hard like Wolf and Joker? No, actually, he has really, really solid game plans across the board because T-Jolt shuts down a lot of characters and T-Jolt back air shuts down a lot of characters. At different matchups, does he sometimes struggle to like play a game plan? No, not really. He's really mobile and small and can kind of just run away from you forever and then advantage state you forever. Are his combos pretty difficult? Yeah, that one's true. He, he can struggle, he struggles to hit his most optimal combos all the time because you have to be ready for DI and SDI, but they're all doable. Me and Shiny Mark and H4 have been labbing a lot of stuff and understand that a lot of it are reactable, we're just being bad. Because mostly, me and Shiny Mark play on Wi-Fi, and it's really hard to react to them on Wi-Fi, so then we forget to go for them offline because we're like, yeah, whatever, we'll just get the normal up air forward air, and then we're like, right, we can bridge, and then we remember that, we get bridges offline, and it's just ridiculous. The only actual flaw of Pikachu is the fact that he does not have a spammable kill aerial, that's like an actually good kill aerial, like a Rob back air, Pyra back air, uh, a game of like, you know, Sonic back air, Steve back air. He doesn't have something like that. That's basically his only flaw. He's otherwise broken. He has really good at runaway. He's really good at aggression. He has great combos. He has great out of shield. The best recovery in, or one of the best recoveries in the game, one of the best edge guardings in the game, if not the best edge guarder in the game, one of the best projectiles in the game, just is so strong in general. He has a crazy good matchup spread. Is he difficult? Yeah, but everyone at top level is difficult. So whatever, it's fine. And if you say like, well, you said Joker and Wolf are bad because they're hard, shut up. It's my tier list. I can say what I want. Pikachu's busted. He's busted, okay? You don't understand. But the character that is more busted by far is Steve. I don't think it's close that Steve's the best character. I think realistically it's top one and then two through four and then five through 10. He has some of the best ground normals in the game. He has some of the best combos in the game. He has one of the best grabs. He has one of the best disadvantage states, even though it can be predictable, but that's mostly the Steve players. He has one of the best recoveries. He has really good edge guarding, ignoring block, and then really good edge guarding because you can just block the ledge. He has some of the best combos in the game that people don't even do because the top Steve players still don't nil somehow. It's been like three years and they still still don't nil combo, which is crazy to me. This character has like zero to deaths that are like basically, not zero to deaths, but like 30 to deaths that are kind of un SDIable because they don't rely on fair. They just rely on up tilt and going up. It's, it's so stupid. It's ridiculously good. None of the Steve players do it, which blows my mind. He has some really cheap stuff with TNT ledge trapping, TNT down smash air dodge. He has like so many things that you have to be ready for that it's basically impossible to be ready for all of them. And then of course he can just slow the game down. He deals with zoners by putting up blocks 
and getting diamond and he is one of the only characters that benefits from not doing anything kind of like Wario except you don't have to wait a minute and a half and then he'll beat your ass when he hits you because he does 0 to 70 off of an up tilt that he can walk into you doing it and if it's diamond it's like minus one on shield so completely safe if they go up tilt shield or up tilt roll you're not punishing that it's possible it's literally impossible I don't think I need to say more about it. He also has PMLG, which none of the Steve players use. I don't even know if it's banned anymore, PMLG, but I, Steve, 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 Steve Minecraft, ridiculous character. And that is the end of my tier list. That is all 80, whatever, however many characters there are. This game has a lot of good characters. Again, I legitimately think the only bad, actually bad character is Ganondorf. I think everyone else is playable. Uh, so play who you want. The game is very fun. I hope you enjoyed the tier list. And yeah, what do you think? Of course, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, of course, if you watch to this end, subscribe, throw notifications, ring the bell. I would appreciate it. See you all next time.